Hello, welcome back to the Mover and Gonkey Show after Christmas special. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. High, high Command said no. <laughs> high Command <laughs> said no on Christmas Day, but high happy command belated said, Merry Christmas or Merry Christmas to everybody out so there. The up, so it Still counts. Hi, happy after Christmas, Merry Christmas. Belated. City yeah. Kwanzaa, Happy Kwanzaa. Pretty sure it is. Hanukkah. Yeah, I'm, even, I'm even lucky to be here now. So yeah, you're, and you, you're lucky to be here. Correct. Welcome, Story of my life. Uh, those of you that are watching live, those of you that are listening on the podcast, probably driving somewhere. I watched or listened to two episodes on my way to family. Nice, it's a two and a half hour drive, and it's about a two and a half hour podcast because we went really long last time. <laughs> but uh, you know, you learn things when you listen. Yeah, what we can do better. Yeah, what what mm -hmm. can we do for you? Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, we've got a show today. I'm not going to say it's a good show. It's just a show. <laughs> um, Gonky, how was your uh, your Christmas there since we weren't working? Yeah, um, it was good. No, I, I've got young kids and, you know, Santa Claus is real. And, uh, you know, to pull all that off takes a little bit of magic. So yep. that's kind of what <clears throat> my wife and I were, were doing basically full time, you know, make that magic happen. And uh, it's fun. I my, One of my old... Uh, skippers told me with kids he told me uh you know what's new for them is new for you again and that's that's so true it's pretty fun to just kind of sit there and and watch <laughs> watch things happen so did that um hung out with family and friends christmas day we just stayed home in our pajamas and watched the kids play but yeah it's pretty pretty low key how about you do you have matching pajamas is that are you one of those no. couples that does the matching and takes the picture <laughs> everybody has to wear the same I would do that if I could find a woman and we could all wear Dale Earnhardt pajamas. Uh, See, well, first of all, let's just stop it. I could find a woman. <laughs> so if we could, if we could get past that first caveat, then we can talk about Dale Earnhardt PJs. My wife like loads the way that I dress myself. So um, yeah, she, no. she just yeah she doesn't <laughs> like the mover and gawky merch. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually she does. She actually does. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, uh, yeah it's, it's everything else, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey man. Well, so Miss Luna Bell, she shows up. I got the camera working this time. I hope, uh, hey, if she, she shows up, Santa Paws was good to her. She got yeah. a whole haul of stuff. Uh, I got rope. Um, so there's <laughs> that. 
You got coal? Uh, I <laughs> literally got a rope, dude. Um, yeah. So anyway. Um, Doug, how was your Christmas? Man? Yeah. Douglas, let's talk about something less depressing. You got something from Mover. I did. I got a Luna Challenge coin. Nice. Yeah. New, yeah. new prize and card. possession. And a card. Two cards, one of which immediately went to my wife. Yeah, because there's two of y'all. Yeah. Yep. Did you say out. car or card? Cards. Cards. We're not that big yet. Mm. Right, once just, we once we get we go global, then maybe. But it's the disability right now man. with only 254 people watching <laughs> presently. There will be no cars. We're not Oprah. I was I was cards scrambling. Look, we're not Oprah or a man named Scobie uh, that can pro <laughs> promise. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's move on before we get super fired. Um, How's your neck, dude? <laughs> yeah, so Mover and I spent like pretty much all of Friday doing a Five nonstop of TCS B BFM. I mean, literally, right? Uh, take off parallel runways, climb it up, take oh, yeah. a cut away. And yeah. even though we weren't pulling G's, literally, like two hours into it, we we sounded like a bunch of old farts. Like our, my neck hurts. <laughs> Stop caring at that point. So like, just kill me. Just yeah, get it over with. I don't care anymore. Yeah, the um, you know, the normal range of motion is fine, but then when you really crank your head around, even though you're not pulling any G's, like I don't know if it's like you know old injuries coming back, but uh, yeah, by the end of the day, man, I was I was even doing the you know, <laughs> hold your hold your uh, push your head over there with your other hand thing to help out, but uh, plus the VR goggles, right? I mean, they're I don't know how much it weighs, a couple pounds maybe, but it uh. Yeah, it was my neck. How was your neck? No worse than usual. I mean, when you've got a herniated disc, it pretty much hurts all the time. So, I mean, it doesn't make it worse. Yeah. It's just, it is. Yeah. Mine, so, mine hurts now. Right yeah. Now. It doesn't hurt now. It's just <clears throat> the usual, the usual number of, of, of pain, pain stuff. But, uh, you know, it's good. It's, I'm glad we're, um, we're doing that. And hey, so the plan is for this DCS dog fights, um, first of all, we are not like all the Good. channels. We're not like what is it? The the growling sidewinder guy, <laughs> the yes. the other guys, the British or uh, Kiwi or whatever they are, the ones yeah. with the weird accents. We are not those people. So when we D go different in, accents, they're, yeah. they're different. They're yeah. they're they're not Margot Robbie, but they're not. You know, it's <laughs> just it's not. But anyway, we're not those people. No. So when you guys watch these videos, please watch them as if it's Mover and Gonky, not some official test. It's a couple of it's a couple of buddies going out just having a good time. Yes. Who really used to do things like this in real life? But are, Grim are Reapers. Just enjoying there you go. It. Somebody said Grim Reapers. There you go. So I don't know. I don't watch. I yeah. I watch nothing because I'm not going to watch that. I don't. That's not interesting <clears throat> to me. But so like I I can know half the jets we map the controls the morning of so there's no <laughs> curves there's no inversion tables or whatever there's no like super secret thing every time i tried to gun gonky the jet would start doing this because i can't find motor skills and i think you had the same problem too although yeah. Yeah. somebody <laughs> somebody believes in face shots so to speak well and because i would take him in real life sure you would gonky I would. Sure you would. Look, the skill is, for is training, the gun track. The skill is the gun track. If you're, you're going to be, if you're going to like, like I'm, a kill I, is a like, kill. Wh whatever. I'm just, you know what? That's fine. How, how is a face 99% because you know what? One is domination and one is you got lucky. Well, then why? Hey, then why take BVR shots? Because they're all face shots. Because it's a missile. Well, what's the difference? Dude? We're I mean, in a, bullets we're, are we're, little missiles. Gun fighting like men. And you're out there sissy slapping with little pimp slaps, and it just happens to work. I will say this. In DCS, beyond about a half a mile, I can't tell the aspect very well, <laughs> which is part of the reason why I'm like, I'm just going to shoot. I'm not sure if it's plan form. If you, right? There's a couple times uh, like, are you coming at me or going away? <laughs> yeah, that that is a thing. Where's the nose pointed? Well, sometimes... Right. Uh, well, there was that one time where you didn't know where the nose was pointed because I had departed the aircraft. Mm, so that's right. That's I right. was just falling like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I right. was in the vertical notch, but I wasn't intending to be. 
because apparently the uh, paddle switch on the Su-27 is, is an on-off switch, not a hold-it switch. So once you get into that regime, you're done. She's on, so she's on. It's a lot of fun. So we're starting. We're going to release one video a week, assuming Gonky can keep up with that. Yeah. Uh, starting with the probably the funniest one, P-51 versus the Hornet. And every yeah. week, we'll take a couple minutes to talk about it on this show to primer it. Yeah, and I'll... I'll First of all, I, again, I <clears throat> I have to huge plug for uh, Butch and Mike over yeah. wings. Yeah, for I sure. don't I don't have my own uh, system. DCS airplane. Same reason we didn't do a show like last night. Continue. Um and <laughs> and Mike, uh, the guy he always steps up. I mean, there was stuff he bought, you know, just so we could make this happen. And then you know, I get there, you know, this is off time, man. You don't have to come in there and. He's, he's getting everything set up and, you know, helping me out. Cause I, I'm a, you know, I have a hard enough time getting this little show going technology wise, but, uh, just awesome. If, if you're ever in Pensacola, you got to swing by, by wings. It's, it's a little museum and Butch was, Butch was there. I only talked to him for a couple minutes and, you know, he had a bunch of old pictures from his Tomcat days, Tomcats. Cause he was a Tomcat guy. And, oh, uh, it's funny. Yeah, he's real. But you know, like I was getting ready to leave cause I didn't want to bother him. He had some customers there and he just said, Hey man, come here. I want to show you these stories or pictures. And he started, every picture had a story. And he told me, he said, man, there's so many good stories here. One of them was one of his best friend who ended, he, you know, who, who got killed. He ejected out of a Tomcat hit the tail, oh, geez, but, yeah. but I mean, just all the stories. So go in there and, uh, and, uh, you know, talk to those guys, you know, th throw my name around. <laughs> and uh just just enjoy it but th if it wasn't for them i wouldn't I, I don't. did you get any deep intel while you were there <laughs> ron rio oh. <laughs> mover um <laughs> yeah so it's awesome and i will say as another limb fact gonky had probably the best dcs setup you can imagine it's pretty good uh, in the world does it's it does good. it move does it move it has the race car seat uh that vibrates and oh and, yeah and turns a little bit so that's good. The, the biggest improvement that they, that they did was uh, last time I played it, the stick was way far forward, but they put you the stick simulated, where, sir. You did not play. Yes, they they uh, moved yeah. the stick back in the simulation where it would be in real life. So uh, that that helped tremendously. But uh, yeah, awesome. it was it was awesome. Man. I, it was awesome. You, you had quite the learning curve. So it's awesome. We did. Uh, I think I counted. I think we got between 12 and 14 videos. So 12 to really? 14 weeks. And so this week we're starting with that, and I made this cool, this cool little intro for all of them. Check it out. Wait Got for it. it. I covered it with the DCS dog. Anyway, so right. I, I like, made one of those. Like honestly, starting with the P fifty one mover said the little primer, but um, I think mover, you'd agree with me. I was. Shocked. exceptionally i was shocked com completely floored shocked. by the, by how deadly the p51 is well i went back and I, so watching it as i'm editing you yeah. made i didn't realize you made the same comment i did because you know so the way we did this was uh gonky uh start, started in the hornet and i was in yeah. the p51 and then uh, you know after i talked a whole bunch <laughs> of trash we swapped roles and i kept same complaining results. and i was like why and I kept saying, I was like, Gonky, the reason this is so difficult is because we're starting at 220 knots. This is not Hornet territory. We're already in the flats here. And the P-51's like, this is great. Uh, now, but even even the rate, even the rate. Uh, dude, well, because that's oh, it's, it's already. I, know, uh, I, I mean, know. it's the it's like if you went and fought a T-6 Texan two or yeah, an A-10, right. you'd see the same thing. You know, that's why yeah. they call it hog popping, because they do the circle the hog things, you know, and um, <laughs> yeah. well, we just. We kept yeah. getting suckered into it because we'd be like, let's do it a beam set. And it's like, dude, this is, ter this is terrible. It was eye opening. I'm not going to uh, lie. It was it was quite fun. Um, <laughs> so we did. Uh, uh, let me see if I can go through all the ones we did. We did uh, Su-27 versus an F-18. So at first we just did Hornet versus me doing something different. And next time mm -hmm. we go, we're going to swap roles and Gonky yep. will be in the something different. And I'm going to be in the Viper. So we did Hornet versus Su-27, Hornet versus MiG-29. Um, Hornet versus Mirage 2000, Hornet versus Tomcat, Tomcats, Hornet Tom versus Cats. F5, Hornet versus MiG 21, Hornet versus F 86, Hornet versus P 51, P 51 versus P 51, P 51 versus BF 109, 
Gonky and a Tomcat. Another shocker. <laughs> Gonky and a Tomcat versus uh, me and the F5. Gonky and a Tomcat versus me and the Hornet. Uh, what else did we do? Does that does that cover it? I mean, anyway, it's about Dude, it's about so. twelve to fourteen. So one a week uh, as we go, and I think it's yeah. it's pretty exciting. I I, I used to I tell students fun, like. Dude. I used to tell students like after like an hour 15, the learning, yeah. curve, like you stop learning. So I, we went way. <laughs> it was fun. I, it I was will fun. say for a Friday, you know, it was, it was fun. What frustrated me. Um, so I'm, I'm on the G2. It's on its last leg for those that know what this is, the reverb G2. And so for whatever reason, I'm still having audio issues. I got the, my mic to record, but then Gonky's audio and the jet audio wouldn't record. So, You'll have to bear with us because it's using Gonky's audio, which I think they were recording something other than your headset. So, of course, we always have audio issues and, you know, it's never perfect. But I think you get the gist of what happened. And I think it was a lot of fun. And I think we've anchored on this topic too long because it's been 15 minutes. So Sorry. let's move on. It is something fun to talk about because I think we uh, did uh, do that. So for my subscribers, and I actually go into the comments. I want to address this. So Kate says, I'm a little disappointed we had to pay to and become members. It's affordable right now, but I just personally off put by having to pay to be welcome. You're always welcome. There's always free content on this channel, you know, um, and you can watch for free on Gonky's channel as as right now. Um, you, you never could participate for free on Gonky's channel or my channel because we don't have time to address every single one. That's why we had the super chats. I've explained ad nauseum why we did what we did, and I think it's working out really well, although Last week, I discovered if I wear a hat that's backwards, I get a million views. So we may have to start that. Uh, you got to start wearing a hat? Feet. Yeah. Where is your start, hat? <laughs> I have to start wearing a damn hat. So there's yeah. that part. But then also, you are getting something different. And I'm not going to sell this, but especially like this DCS thing, right? I just finished editing two different videos for, for this week. One, members that are uh, in the mid-category, the flight lead and above, are going to get early access to uh, what we did, the three sets. Those that are doing the, the mission commander, the highest level, which is still only $9.99. It's, I mean, still lower compared to other channels. You're getting the Discord access plus uh, the entire video. So, like, for example, the P-51 versus Hornet was 20, 27 minutes. Well, I didn't, I'm not going to put that on, on YouTube, but you get all the banter in between. You get the tack view. Doug, you watched it, right? It's, it's substantially different. Yeah, I'm still impressed at how far Gonky can turn his head, too. <laughs> he got his head stuck. <laughs> too i did so anyway yeah. i, I want to address that because it's not something that you know i was i wanted to do but well the, lo the long and short of it is we had to find a way for movers channel to stop being penalized by yeah. by the live streams where mine wasn't being penalized so and, and the the, the or, evidence is december i mean if you look yeah. at we i went from seven hundred thousand views in a month to 1.8 million and that's all we changed. I mean, yeah. it was seriously penalizing. It's the algorithms. I mean, I, yeah. we wouldn't have done that if, you know, like he wouldn't have had to do that if, if he right. wasn't getting penalized. And and now with the subscribers, you know, I could do mover mailbag, which is where the Q&A stuff. We figured out we can't have Q&A with all the 110 members or whatever, because then we'd get bogged down. But Q&A or as we see stuff like this, you know, we can we can mark it or whatever. So uh, anyway, and then th now that there's still, you know, the 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 chats. How do I get a Luna challenge going? I don't know. <laughs> that was provided. Um, we did that oh, as cool. part of the, uh, as the whole thing with, with, uh, the national police association, they only made a hundred of them. And so, um, that's a good question. I don't know. They're not for sale. Uh, you I have to sell no mover for 20 years <laughs> and be a part of Luna's upbringing. Cause Doug was there. Uh, ever see the DCST bird? No, I don't watch. Mm -hmm. I don't watch DCS. The only thing I did watch a uh, Sue 30 video. I saw a Kiowa video and a Sue 30 video today. And I was like, dude, we should do that Sue 30 thing. Cause that's one of the things Gonky, I'm interested in your opinion. When we get to that part is how did it look in DCS versus in real, real life? <laughs> now, granted, you probably did not fight somebody who departed the jet and pancaked into the ground, <laughs> but <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's like the guys, the you know, the guys that, that flew it, they, they said the, the more experienced pilots used the thrust vectoring a lot because it could get you. And I didn't really, I took that as, as kind of like in the, like teaching the guys how to fight in the Hornet, you know, they, 
full full, full throttle and pull the stick all the way back. They, you know, they alpha themselves out of the fight. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, that's what happens. But then, you know, you, I probably more accurately demonstrated what would happen <laughs> if yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, this, what we did, granted, and Doug pointed this out to me too. It's the FC3 or whatever, Flaming Clips 3. It's a different, it's not a high fidelity flight model. I got you. And okay. it's not thrust vectoring. So the MiG-29 and the Su-27 are not, professional flight models like the other ones are so they don't really know but from what i understand the su-30 they did and that's it's a free mod that's coming out so i am would be cool yeah i can't yeah. wait uh and then by the time we do it again probably the f4 will be out that'd be awesome i can't wait dude I'm colonel tune me. what is the percentage of pilots that apply for and qualify for disability due to flying i bet it's substantial i bet, I bet it's everybody neck and back plus Ears. cancer Cancer yeah. and fighter is, yeah, there's studies on that because of the radar energy and stuff. Yeah, um, those are both uh high, high numbers. And then Wretched Rob says, Gonkey's VCR blinks 12. <laughs> the fact that Gonkey <laughs> still has a VCR <laughs> is probably, oh, dude, indicative. that is funny. <laughs> All right, moving on to the show. Breaking news <laughs> uh, the Super Hornets shoot down everything. Yeah, All did the things, Douglas. Let's see. U.S. assets to include the USS Laboon and FA-18. Hey, just as an aside, whenever I see the name of a Navy vessel, I always go and read about the person it's named after, and it's worth doing in this case. It's almost what, it's, it's always worth doing. Well, what did Laboon do? Yeah, what did he do? He dove off a submarine to um, into a minefield to save downed pilots. Got All a right. star. Wow. wow. So there you go. I'm glad that I read that. If you guys were going to ask me, it was just is a that, suggestion. Is well, that World War yeah. II? Yeah. Wow. The anyway, greatest generation. Continue. Back to the story. And FA-18 Super Hornets from the Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group shot down 12 one-way attack drones, three anti-ship ballistic missiles, and two land... This sounds like a Christmas song. And two land attack <laughs> cruise missiles in the Southern Red Sea that were fired by the Houthis over a 10 hour period, which began at approximately 6.30 AM Sana time on December 26th. There were no damage. There was no damage to ships in the area or reported injuries. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, wow. so far the kill total is Raptors, balloons, super Hornets, a bunch of other stuff, plus drones, yeah. plus missiles, plus all this stuff. That's crazy. I wonder what kind of anti-ship missiles. I mean, it just says the Exocet, ballistic. of course. MiG twenty eight, <laughs> that Houthi F five launching the Exocet anti-ship missile. Like they're legit, dude. I just made a video. Yeah, yeah. You can't let them get it close to the carrier. Well, yeah, that's pretty amazing. I, wow, yeah, yeah. Well, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad they're successful. I mean, that's a lot, man. I mean, in a ten hour period, twelve, twelve projectiles <laughs> dude absolutely uh and it just goes to i mean to be and that's the next one um here douglas let's remove that um it just goes to show you how great the you know the super hornet radar you know oh, to, be, yeah. to be picking those things up i mean that's yeah it's pretty high fidelity stuff yeah. but can you imagine you know i do i would because this happened when I was in at Balad in 2009 you know i was sitting there sovereignty alert and we would get or they would say, hey, we might scramble you. And it was for a drone or something. And dude, I didn't think any less of it. I'm like, I'm going to get to kill something in the air. Right. Didn't get to. <clears throat> Somebody right. else got to it. I was just as disappointed. But, you know, in yeah. today's world where it's not the, the the hordes of, you know, German fighters or, you know, Japanese zeros, you take what you can get. And if you can shoot down a drone, it counts. Yeah. You know, but the scary thing is, I mean, you know, 12 <clears throat> The yeah, 12 projectiles no, coming at you. I mean, the, right. How did we beat the Raptor in the T-38? We just threw a lot of T-38s well, at him, right? So, is that, so is that number all inclusive, just the Super Hornet? Or is that including all the, the I'm sure, fleet defense? Like, yeah, I don't think a Hornet did 12. No, no, no. no. It's part of <clears throat> a DCA, right, plan. So, um, but what I'm saying is, you know, how do you, how do you get past that? <clears throat> those layers of defense well i mean yeah. right, eventually right uh, a leaker or you know somebody gets gets by i mean when you're up against an overwhelming opponent like we were t-38s versus raptors the best way to win is just like attrition right yeah. oh, and overwhelm them right so play the numbers yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good so, point. Hopefully, though, I mean, hopefully our guys and gals out there are, you know, on it every time. So that's why you need lasers, dude. <laughs> sharks with pew, lasers. Pew. Shark, shark, yeah. shark. Shark with freaking laser beams. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. wild, man. Hopefully, I'm like I said, man, I'm I, I, I'm looking for de escalating news instead of escalating news because uh, yeah. well, 2024 well, is right around the corner. I don't think we're going to hear that, but you know, <laughs> I like your. I like where your head's at. You mean things aren't going to cool off? Come on. Oh, no, not in 2024. It's election oh. year, Gonky. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's how those things work. And then uh, moving on to the exact same target or uh, thing, Douglas, you got the uh, IDF, Israeli Defense Force, or IA. I, I are they not IAF? No. Israeli uh, Defense Force, Israeli Air Force. I Anyway, shoots down a hostile yeah. aerial target. I, an Israeli Air Force fighter jet shot down a hostile aerial target, aerial target believed to be a drone launched from Yemen over the Red Sea earlier today, the military says. I guess it's the IAF as a branch of the IDF. In a short statement, the mm -hmm. IDF says the target was heading toward Israel and the IAF's air traffic control monitored the device throughout the incident. The Iran-backed Houthis in Yemen claim to have fired several drones at Israel's southernmost city of Elat today. The IDF releases photos showing the interception. Shall we watch? Yeah. All right. Is this a new one? I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, this is better than the other one. Can you make it full screen, Doug? Can you guys hear that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be careful, Gonky. This is where we end up on Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> don't Seems say anything <laughs> <laughs> missile went from being there to uh, not being there very quickly I, uh, looks once good again, next <laughs> <laughs> i will once again echo my previous comments dude it looks cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. it does look cool um but, but yeah dude just dawned on me all right so clearly <clears throat> you know we're fighting an opponent opponent that doesn't have money time or the resources well, they have money and resources from another well, country well what i'm saying what i'm getting at is to uh you know fight fire with fire right so they can't stand up their own manned air force so they're using drones so what happens when they what happens when they start putting like jammers or they start building stealth drones right so oh, dude you just made fox news for sure they're gonna be I like Former no, no, F-18 no, 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 no. <laughs> hypothesizes no, about this is, this is no what intel. Happens. This How is just... are they gonna? <laughs> yeah. Next step this... in the war, the Houthis get but, jammer tech from the Russians. Go ahead. But, but you know what I'm saying. So I mean, clearly uh, the, the air, air defense radar picked up. You know the drones coming, and they're like, "Hey, send us." You know the whatever whatever airplane that was, probably F-35, and they found them probably on radar. And uh, you know, put the flare pod on them. But what happens like when you EO? Get... It's not a pod. We've been we've been uh, last time I got corrected on this Sorry. too. We, we say it generically like a box of Kleenex, right. but it's an <clears throat> EO IR tracker bulbous thing. It's thingy. Okay, yeah, the, the BO the, thingy. That's the battle penguin puts its thingy sure. on the on the drone. <laughs> puts its sensors. The <laughs> sensors are on the drone. <laughs> that's right. But as it's but, looking through his own feet. <laughs> But what happens, like, even, you know, even if it buys the drone another 20, 30 miles, you know, can they do have time to stop it, though? All right. So that, that's the only question I'm asking. Well, Looking at this as an opponent that doesn't have the big air force to fight, it's like, well, let's do this with these drones and we can pump a ton of tech into these drones. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, and man. that's very, well, here's what I see at the escalation is it's going to make it a regional conflict very quickly. Because oh, yeah. the first time that thing breaks through and they, they're unable to shoot it down and it hits somewhere, you know, Tel Aviv. Or or blows a hole in a carrier. Yeah. Yemen gets flattened. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's Houthi or whatever, those targets get destroyed. And now yeah. we're now we're not talking because right now we're, we're we're in this very restrained, you know, the the Houthis are making all these propaganda videos and saying how, you know death to america we can't wait for you guys to come knock on our door and we're not really doing anything because we don't want the wider conflict because we prefer as donkey has said some de-escalation we don't want to because you know the first thing that happens is lebanon yemen iran iran oh yeah dude yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a regional conflict now 
a lot of things are happening. We just don't want to see this if we can avoid it. 100%. I agree. But that's not to say that they will be successful. I mean, we could s keep doing this. You I know. So, <laughs> dude, I, I really do. Yeah, but my I mean, thing, I, I think my my concern is just what happens when, you know, that golden BB, like Gonky shooting at me and DCS. What happens when that golden BB hits and he's very lucky? Me and BBs, plural. No skill whatsoever. <laughs> he happens to shoot down an Israeli something, and Israeli goes knock knock, yeah. um, and now we're all in war. And Gonky gets dragged to the front line wearing his army helmet and army pants. <laughs> Did you buy some army pants for your new job? You're supposed to be wearing army pants, dude. I forgot to tell you that. No, I'm going to show up in a flight suit. Uh, sea snakes. Flight suit and a smile, man. Sea snakes. Sea, sea snakes. snakes. Right. Uh, all right. Uh, Douglas, uh, we'll hold on for the second. I'm going to get to these uh, chats real quick. Joel. Joel. Uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Uh, appreciate that. Janitor is back. Fokker DR1 DCS kill is the only true kill. <laughs> yeah. Dude, do they have the do they have the Fokker? I don't think they have anything pre World War One. Yeah. I was surprised at the remember we were talking about the BF 109 with the leading edge. I had no idea. Had leading edge. Yeah. Dude, that was crazy. Yeah. It, to me, it was crazy how much easier it was to fly the 109. Than the P51? Yeah. Yeah. We should we should have tried the P47. Yeah, we should have. Uh, Joel, Joel there thank again. you. Thank you, Joel. Wow. Five bucks for Jeff Gordon, PJs for Luna. <laughs> <laughs> yes, matching mover yeah. and Luna with mover and matching. Luna matching PJs. <laughs> Big Cheese says, Um, how about a holiday special special song by the duo BZs called How Deep Is Your Intel? <laughs> 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 Merry uh, Christmas. Looking forward to the DCS that is stuff. Funny. God, dude, I'm telling Bruce you what. He hates us. He's like freaking. He hated us East. before. He hated <laughs> us before. Don't act like that was. Is that because we, we we went to pilot training? Is that why? Radiators. We got. <laughs> you know, T Bear started, and this is this is probably where the my my bias against the self loading baggage came from. When T Bear, <laughs> when I was a young lieutenant. Okay, T Bear used to talk shit. Oop, can we say that <laughs> word? Well, you've been cussing a lot lately. I think it's no, I haven't. Well, yeah. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> when he was, when I was a young lieutenant, he was telling stories. He talked about uh, going to the O Club as a fighter pilot at Randolph back when O Clubs were a thing. And he went in and it was a bunch of navs and whatever they called them back then, you know, F4 Wizzos or whatever. And he goes to the bar and he stands up and he goes, you ain't got radiators. You ain't got shit. And it started like a brawl and he snuck out <laughs> the back as they're brawling behind him. Oh, and as a impressionable young Lieutenant that has stuck with me. And I have henceforth been like, oh, no radiators, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, whatever. That's yeah. where I got the, I'd rather have the extra gas too. Yeah, well, in the Hornet, in the Hornet rag, when it was just the Hornet rag, not Super Hornet, it was bred into us. Um, well, you were where I got. I mean, Battlefield Three. I mean, made made this channel famous. But <laughs> arm the seat, Wizzo, you're the last player. Actually, <laughs> that's what I was taught. Is, is from Gonky. So yeah, I can't take I got one more. <laughs> yeah, uh, dude. The funniest part. I don't know if you ever picked this up, dude. You're talking to Jester. I cannot wait for people to hear you talking to Jester. Uh oh. In the Tomcat. Oh no. <laughs> now wait, there's a reason why I was talking to him like that. Because <laughs> I <laughs> go on. Say my ass, dude. <laughs> the reason why is because I had no idea how to read the number, like any of the instruments in that thing. And if if I asked the fake for you or whatever it was. <laughs> my altitude or airspeed he would tell me I was like, this is amazing <laughs> it's like better than a helmet it's like how fast am i going oh, oh dude i i just can't wait i can't wait uh doug you caught you saw it doug you commented when you saw that yeah it's um what'd classic. you call it Classic example of superstitious behavior. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it worked. It worked once, and, well, it, it was, and there listen, we went. Man, you got. You got. Look, in a high stress situation, you go back to what you were first taught. <sighs> that's that's the 
That's the true, oh, dude. That's, that's the true C model Hornet guy coming oh, out. Oh my me. god! <laughs> yeah, eject me, Jester. That's right. Uh, what's funny is when I got in the Tomcat, Tomcat, there was no Jester. He never said a word. You didn't ask him a question. You seem to have it all figured out up there. <laughs> so. I, I heard that he heard that you were fighting Gonky and just didn't, didn't got step out. that day. Yeah, he got out. He just like, no, you know, I'm not he doing that. on takeoff. It's yeah. all you. Uh, JP says, Merry Christmas. Love the show. Please keep the episodes coming. Hope the year starts off great for you guys. Thanks, JP. Gonky, are you it, doing, um, do you have time? Are you doing a year in review? Yeah. <clears throat> I am. I don't know when yet, um, but yeah. Because I also, it, like, in addition to doing it, um, I'll, I'll do it on, like, a Ready Room Live. I think it's it's good to quantify things, you know, yeah. the end of the year. Take a look. So, yeah. I'm going to do one more of a documentary style because I got a lot to, to unpack. Uh, hopefully, people don't think it's whining. Because sometimes you get people that are like, well, are you talking about bad things? It's whining. Because, no, because you have to be real. You have to be real. You, you can't just be like, everything is good all the time. To me, if people see that, you know, we're all struggling, there's there's that genuineness to it. Transparency. Like, transparency. Yes. That's right. Because this year sucked until the end. <laughs> it, it got better. It trended better in December. But uh, 24 is going to be better. You just told me 24 is going to be oh, awesome. I'm in trouble, donkey. We're in trouble. <laughs> <No>. Okay. Douglas, <laughs> uh, we have a, a great. A, and, and now this article is nonsense. Just so we know, it's written by AI, but a dude put his name on it. Did they not see the thumbnail? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Doug. <laughs> Buckle up, Maverick. Lockheed's F-35 now comes with a wingman seat. Roman put his name on it, but it's artificial intelligence. Look at this, dude. Wow. It says, it's, it says it something says buck sort up. of like, yeah. Buck, buck up, up, Maverick. Maverick. <laughs> it, it's sponsored by... Uh, I can it's read enhanced. it, Doug. You want me to read okay. it? This is, a, this is a short one. If it's you scroll, scroll read the whole I thing. can read Okay, Break out the aviator sunglasses. Lockheed Martin just flipped the script on aerial dominance and a stunning move that's got top guns around the world buzzing. That's us, God. Keep our buzzing. The, uh, <laughs> actually, we're not. We're not top guns. The aerospace mogul has dared to double up. We introduced to you the F-35 Lightning II, now with a bonus seat to share the thrill. Are you ready for the tandem terror of the skies? Oh, hey, geez. that's us. We are that's the tandem cool. terror. We've flown together. We were not allowed to fly together. Well, we did in the T-38. Uh, training wheels no longer required. I love this. Once upon a time in the realm of cutting-edge combat aircraft, a rookie pilot's transition to ace was a solitary voyage. But with the new dual cockpit, F-35 is changing the game. It's like bringing a co-pilot with an extra set of eyes and a backup brain. <laughs> Perfect for turning greenhorn pilots into seasoned vets at warp speed. After all, two heads, heads, who said head? Especially under helmets are better than one. Operation Backseat Driver, Deep Intel. Launching a two-seat <laughs> variant isn't, hey, stop it, isn't just about companionship at 30,000 feet. It's about strategic disruption. Picture this. An instructor pilot duo pirouetting through the ether, the ether orchestrating high-octane maneuvers that single-seaters only dream of. Add to that the potential of a second seat electronic warfare prodigies unleashing cyber havoc in the battle sky writes a new narrative. The nuts and bolts makeover. Gone are the days when a second seat meant a sluggish jet lagging behind its sleeker single cousins. Lockheed Martin's wizards have rejigged the legendary F-35 frame. Is it legendary, dude? It's mm. kind of, she's a husky gal. Oh, it's, it's legendary, but. Yeah, promising mm. the cloak of invisibility. I'm invisible. You can't see it. And the lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt of agility, re agility remained uncompromised. The tech specifics are as stealthy as the jet itself, but who doesn't love a good air of mystery? The new sales pitch. Global defense markets get ready for a shakeup. The two-seat F-35 is like the head-turning roadster of the skies, flaunting versatility and style that could have potential buyers rejigging their military shopping list. And for Lockheed's rivals, well, back to the drawing board. At least they're left in the stratosphere dust. Here are the questions, though. Uh, wondering if it's the answer to your Air Force's prayer. Scott, do you have an Air Force? An Air Force prayer? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, my it's the fighter pilot prayer. God, I don't care if I die. Just please don't let me F up. <laughs> A cockpit <laughs> of two means unparalleled pilot training. Intimate. Intimate. It's frowned upon to get intimate in strategy sessions. There's been scandals and potential new mission paradigms. 
Lockheed promised the double dose of pilot doesn't dilute the F-35 genetic code. Uh, we'll get there. Dang, Douglas, stop reading so fast. Crowing, crowing, a tandem F-35 could catapult Lockmart to the top of every military wish list. While nations are tight-lipped, you can bet there's a queue forming for the Airborne Marvel. As for when you can witness the dynamic duo tearing up the skies, patience, ace, greatness takes time, and the sequel to the F-35 saga is worth the wait. Think you've got a hangar big enough for this beast? <laughs> the two-seat F-35 is more than just a fighter. It's an airborne revolution, a spare seat, because sometimes flying solo is just plain old lonely. Strap in and get ready to hit mock speeds with your flying buddy. This isn't just a new chapter. It's a whole new attitude. So... There's a lot to unpack here. First of all, we know wow. it's AI. So uh, has there actually been any news whatsoever of a two seat F-35? Why would they do that? <clears throat> Why would no. they make this up? For I don't know. I don't know. There's no. Yeah, Second, if I were a, a Wizzo, Rio, Sizzo, whatever they're called now, I'd be mad at this article because they get a two seater and they don't even get. It's a pilot. They're putting another pilot in there. They don't even give up Wizzo to, or Ewo or somebody to to do all the nerd stuff back there. <laughs> it's just me and you, Gonky. It's two pilots. Yeah, which I I mean, yeah, I don't. <clears throat> I read this and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> there was a lot of it that I was like, this is just wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, love it though. I love the fact that people are bold enough to put their. AI articles out for the world to see yeah. and then put their own name on it as if they wrote it. Because if you scroll down, you'll actually see the guy. And it's yeah, a real I person, saw that. Roman Polowski, which I think yes. he played football. And I'm like, who is Perkowski, this? sorry. He's a distinguished name in the field of space exploration technology. Propulsion not, system. Not oh, dude, that's, that's fake. <laughs> that's not a real person. That's an AI person. It's an it's AI photograph. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an AI man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. You know, I, I would find it shocking that anybody would read that and be like, "Oh, that's yeah, no, that's not real." He's got a sunburned nose or and drinking. He got problem. punched in the face, man. He looks like he's been well, in a yeah, war fight. Like some wizzo got mad at him for <laughs> putting a two seat fat Amy and removing the wizzo and putting another pilot in there. <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. No, being awesome when you're by yourself is not lonely. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I don't yeah. think I've ever been in a jet and like, hey, I wish I had another mind in this cockpit with me. Because you've got three other assholes with you out there anyway. Mm -hmm. You're like, there's already like aux, one, two aux. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. You know, the single seat, two seat thing will probably be around for a long time. But I just remember when I first hit the fleet, you know, I was a single seat guy and I was treated as such. My friends who were in two seat squadrons, <clears throat> I remember them telling me, Oh, it's just kind of like being in the rag, man. Like they're, they're, they're talking to me about my joint up and I'm like, Oh dude, I would look what it does to <laughs> people. Yeah. Fly the strike Eagle long enough and look at what it turns into those people. Yeah. Like they're damaged. Yeah. Sorry. They become uh blue Falcons, <laughs> if you will. Well, yeah. They'll yeah. turn you into their <clears throat> strike Eagle buddies. Um, they're not all bad, but it's, it's, it's definitely a different culture and I'm glad I, yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Any well, so like the EX, right? The EX is coming out and it's going to these guard squadrons. We're going to talk about the EX in a second. They're flying them single seat. They're like, what's the back seat for? I don't know. Tie it up. See you later. Well, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that was very common in the Navy. I mean, I, I flew tons of D's and F's with nobody in the back. And, you know, uh, I think, though, the big difference between the Navy and the Air Force is. I th correct me if I'm wrong, but every Air Force two seat jet has full controls in the back, right? Throttles and stick. Yes. So that's different than the Navy and the Navy. Like they're it is missionized uh, right. for a Wizzo. That's what we were talking about with Top Gun Maverick when Maverick sat in the back of a yep. Super Hornet. <clears throat> there were no controls back there. Right. So he was doing this to nothing. Un unless I mean they're they're we called them T birds. Uh there's a kit you can. And of course the early stages of training, we had a couple of F models with the controls in the back. Um, couldn't shut down the engines. I think that was the only weird thing, but you, you don't want Thomas doing that. No, mm -mm, no. I mean, yeah, he's a pilot. He's probably a way better P 51 pilot than me, but now that I've got some experience in DCS, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, you, you, you actually want. ground loop the Hornet more than you ground loop the P51 <laughs> in DCS. So I respect for the P51. So. <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, something near and dear to my heart. <laughs> when will Navy we times. learn the findings of the Navy's beard study? Where happen. is the Navy's beard study? I like this guess caption too. Did that face foliage affect this shipmate's mask seal? <laughs> Apparently, the, the Navy His beard it, it repelled everything. It repelled it's all of the yeah. <laughs> Where, where is the Navy's beard study? When, if ever, will it be made public? And will its findings lead to a sea change in a loud sailor stubble? These questions aren't new. From online forums to all hands calls, many active duty sailors have said they'd like to grow a beard, even as some who sport them for medical reasons say they are sometimes ostracized for their facial hair. Big Navy has said no to beards for all, citing concerns that sailors can't get a snug oxygen mask seal with facial hair should they have to fight a shipboard fire. Still, Navy Secretary Carlos del Toro directed that the service conduct a fresh assessment of the issue in 2022 as part of the department's diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. Officials say they expect the study to wrap up in 2023. With 2023 largely now in the rearview mirror, whether the fleet will get the study's results or substantial facial hair policy changes in 2024 remains to be seen. Del Toro's office did not respond to multiple emails seeking the status of the Beard study. Navy officials have previously cited two Navy safe, Navy safety wow say that one five times fast Naval Safety Center reviews that found even a few days stubble might impact a mask's seal, but the service's safety records show just one incident over the past few decades in which a beard prevented a proper seal. That instance involved a civilian shipyard worker. A 2021 Military Medicine article also referenced assessments showing that half-face respirators were 98% effective with one eighth inch beard and 100% effective with one sixteenth inch beard. The Navy's current beard waiver policy limits the hair to one quarter inch in length. Uh, it's nonsense. Every time they come up with this, well, what about the mask? <clears throat> Look cool. at all of these countries that allow fighter pilots to have beards with masks on. ATAC, Draken, like remember we were at Key West Boeing. and the dudes were like with the, yeah, <laughs> Boeing, uh, yeah. airlines across, like there's a lot of, especially in the airline industry, there's a whole lot of ancestor worship with the airline industry. Like we got to have the, the dorky bus driver uniform because that's what they wore back in the 30s. We got to be clean shaven because back in the 30s, that was a, a sign of status or whatever. Meanwhile, there's no standards for like you're morbidly obese and your gut gets hits the yoke when I flare or you're wearing, you know, uh, New Balance black tennis shoes instead of dress shoes or you're wearing a clip on tie with short sleeves. You know, we have these weird cultural appearance things. And now we're on an airline thing, but it comes back to all of these. Like there's this aversion to beards because, well, that's the way we've always done it. But in this case, the Navy... I found out after I did the uh, Mover Ruins movies with Wombat, the Navy used to allow beards. They used to be awesome. They still do on occasion. I mean, if you could, you can right the shaving chit. <clears throat> right, like you can get that in the Air Force. Like you, you know, there are dudes in the Air Force that have like, oh, I get, I think it was some kind of skin yeah. condition. I well, can't special shave. Special forces guys too, man. They don't like well, some of those yeah. guys don't. That's true. What I want to know is how many millions of dollars they spent on that study. Let, we don't go into the weeds on that one because I'm just saying I'm all for it. Oh, 100%. I think you should be able to have a beard. Why not? Airlines, military. There's nothing more depressing than the day of I got to go back to drill and I got to shit because it's like it's by freedom. Yeah. I probably <clears> wouldn't <throat> want a beard if I couldn't have one, if I could have one. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, there's a couple times. I mean, I don't really grow facially very much but you know i've i've flown tactical airplanes with it. yeah exactly uh, our friends up to the north how could we be yeah. allies if we can't look like our allies <laughs> <laughs> they fly our planes good enough yeah you can fly a hornet but we can't have a beard together that's right yeah plus dude a beard makes you look so salty right i mean yeah look yeah i mean grizzled grizzled that's right yeah I mean, season season yeah. <laughs> whatever I just, I thought that yeah. was an article. I hope they bring about. it back, man. But I, uh, yeah. Well, you know what they'll do? They'll bring it back and it won't be for pilots or officers. It'll be for like everybody else. Yeah. If you work in admin, you can grow a beard. 
because yeah, you're never going to wear a mask. <laughs> well, even the airline mask. I mean, come on, man. It seals and it, it's we, high we pressure. Can have, we can have beards where I'm at. Oh, it's your, but you can't have CPDLC. I don't know. So that's that the trade off. <laughs> oh, is that that uh, Clarence delivery thing? You thing? Yeah, the Clarence delivery thing. You have to yes. call in manual clearances like a man. But you can, <laughs> but you can have a. It's so funny that there's a, a bunch of some of the cabs have, and they they bring these beard like uh, maintaining kits with them, and they're just constantly <laughs> like constantly like I'm just like, dude, is it bothering you? No, no, it's nice. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like the guys that clip their toenails in the cockpit. Oh no, 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 no. That's a thing, dude. Not on two-hour flights, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, transcons. Good luck. Uh, moving on. JP, JP says, thanks. Merry Christmas. Love the show. Please keep the episodes coming. Hope the year starts off great for you guys. Thanks, JP. Thank you. Joel Thank says, you. I had to split the money between two Super Chests to make it 69, Giggity. <laughs> it's a good cause to donate <laughs> to, and the holidays are about giving and receiving, Giggity. <clears throat> thanks, Joel. That was That's his awesome. Giggity combined with my Giggity. Mm -hmm. Giggity squared. Wretched Rob says, I know everyone's YouTube. Thanks for the support on the Twitch. Uh, is there a mailing address for Douglas at where as well? Probably just send them to me. Care of Mover. Yeah, Care. PO Box 8594. <laughs> uh, oh, God, I have to go to the post. I hate the post office. Uh, to Wolf Jaeger, uh, don't worry, bro. When you said pot or laser to an F-35 guy, I know what you're talking about. EOTS does really cool stuff, though. Not going to lie. EOTS. That's what it's called. Yep. Yep. Ray says dingus. The term for the mm. F-35's EO suite is dingus. Yes. Wow, I didn't I feel know that. like that's made up. Mm, I don't yeah. believe you. Mm. I wish I had someone hey, in my backseat said no one. That's what she said. <laughs> I, <clears throat> look, I'm a hardcore single seat guy, but I tell you what, on an air nav, it's pretty nice. Fat Amy becomes bloated Amy. <laughs> I think it just becomes morbidly obese Amy. Yeah. Like yeah, you, okay. you can't make that thing fatter. Or it's really fat Amy super fat can we say that calorically challenged right isn't that the new thing um plus size plus mm -hmm. size <laughs> normal uh what is wrong with new balance shoes nothing nothing as, long as you're you're in your jorts and your white socks but if you're in uniform yeah it like looks high shirt and tie like if you're form. wearing an airline uniform now granted should we just be wearing khakis and a polo shirt yes or as <laughs> i like to say a flight suit but <laughs> If you're going to say we got to wear the bus driver uniform, don't show up with some tennis shoes. I don't care what yeah. your orthopedic <laughs> problems are. Unpopular opinion. Oh, we already did that one. Okay, moving on to the next one. Moving on, moving on. We are talking about the, uh, this is your article. Uh, if, as soon as you finish with your COVID story. I no, Dude, we don't have that anymore. Whatever. You can't. Have. Doug, did you read it? Can you read I it? Can, I, can. I can go ahead and read it. Yeah, just summarize it, man. It's short. Navy's last Super Hornet contacts, contract stalled due to rising airframe costs. Negotiations over the Navy's last batch of Super Hornets have stalled due to growing price tag of fourth generation aircraft. USI News has learned the contract for the Navy to buy the final 20 FA 18 EF Super Hornets from Boeing is at a standstill. The Navy continues to work with Boeing on the contract for the 20 congressionally added Super Hornet aircraft. Ongoing contract negotiations cannot be discussed at this time. The program manager for the FA-18 and the EA-18G told USNI News in a statement, in prior fiscal years, Congress appropriated and authorized about $1.15 billion, with, which with the Navy's estimate of $55.7 million per aircraft, means the service could buy 20 Super Hornets. We are committed to ensuring warfighter readiness and supporting our U.S. Navy customer. We continue to work with the U.S. Navy on a path forward, a Boeing spokesman told USNI News in an email. But Boeing's estimate for super rents has become more expensive. Um, let's see. Approaching the cost of an F-35C for latest lot 15 through 17 contract, the cost of an F-35C is about $102.1 million. The contract was for 20 aircraft. It's not going to be 20 aircraft because we've taken so long to get the final determination on that contract. The number of dollars will not go as far, but those aircraft need to be built. And... That yeah. pretty much covers it. Inflationary yeah. pressure. Yeah, I, I mean, I read, <clears throat> I read through this, and it's uh, it's kind of shocking because the price has basically doubled on the last twenty Super Hornets that they're supposed to give to the Navy. Which, 
Um, <clears throat> I get it, inflation is real, but you know, a lot of this stuff is contractually doped out like years in advance. So I, I did a little research on this as far as like what, what might be causing and built basically both like Boeing and the Navy kind of gave their generic answer of, Oh, we're working together to ensure that, you know, the warfighter has the best flying machine, blah, blah. And <clears throat> there was some pretty good, I thought there were pretty good possible reasons, which is, you know, the Navy is not super excited about, uh, that Amy, the F-35, and they're really trying to get the next gen, uh, maybe fighter going. And so maybe so they're, cool. maybe that the, the, you know, the, that's where the, that's where the focus has shifted to oh, scroll uh, down, dude. But as far as getting the last 20 super horns, I mean, these are going to be like, you know, the latest and greatest. And I think it's, I think it's very strange that, I mean, how, I don't know, how does, how does the price of an airplane double like the last 20 you've been making them for like 30 years and it, everything's contractually doped out i don't i don't well did you save 16 cents on a hot dog if last fourth of july or did you pay double uh, well a, a lot of my expenses have doubled yes but but like i said a lot of that is you know i don't have a contract doped out with my uh insurance company you know they just double my insurance right every year they're contingent contracts though right because they're contracts they're plus plus expenses so they they probably built that in because you know they're not going to lose money they're not these these companies are not going to lose money um selling to the government if anything they're going to double it and then double it again but my question to you gonkey would you rather the super hornet or the f-35 like if they're the same price <clears throat> um i don't know i'm biased i'll take the super hornets but you know, for carrier ops, I, I mean, we have F-35s, but I don't, uh, you know, that's, that's just, that's my, that's my biased answer. I mean, I don't know, but you know, even, even with the price increase, they still are cheaper than F-35. So if you had to have the F Super Hornet or the C F-35, now what? Oh, the two C to that. <laughs> oh, dude, I'll take this, the C model any day yeah okay. give me the, so the, the lesser of that, maybe. yeah what's <laughs> no that's, the priority? But that's a, you bring up a good question i mean that's 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 valid you know probably the right answer is you go buy the newer airplane f-35 but well, um I, you know again that and it, they, they talked about that briefly in that article and they're like we just can't do that because there's contract stuff right so um contracts yeah um so my next question to you gonky was this a what variant of super hornets are they the block threes or Should be are block they? three yeah so they are getting the latest and greatest now that i mean that does change things right because yeah. those things are Very awesome good. yeah <clears throat> Very um, good. it'd be nice to fly one one day i don't know damn it <laughs> come on man you can't <laughs> too soon oh, opening a wound man it's like saying her name again she's gone <laughs> <laughs> well that was the uh you know the thing friday he kept saying how being on home made you sad I, know. I told my wife that too and she kind of felt bad but i was like no nah, and that's okay. why she crushed she's like i can't believe you <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> that's why she yeah. was mad all weekend dude there you go yeah. we i felt better man. I, I ran it by butch you know and he's like oh, you made the right choice man i was like all right feel better about that yeah. well the channel said you did the right thing yeah i know because the show was right. canceled. it's not all about me but sorry <laughs> i mean <laughs> gonky check one uh <laughs> yeah I'm still here. <laughs> okay, check me. me. All right. Anything else to add on your article about the Navy? No, I think it's crazy. The last 20 and they're they're yeah. at a standstill. I mean, especially given the, you know, the nature of what's going on around the globe. Well, so what happens, right? Because the Kuwaitis have already bought theirs. They're already built. Yeah. Right. The Navy, it's stalled. Right. So India said no. Yep. And that's it. Then, so the, the, I mean, <clears throat> Boeing's just out of the business. They're just making the EXs. Well, yeah, and uh, I saw in the comments, you know, one of the things I thought we could have talked about, why I didn't bring it up, with the, you know, they're out of the uh, E4B, the Doomsday uh, contracts thing as well. So I mean, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Seems like there's some reorganization happening that, over that's, there. That's what I'm saying. There's something funky going on because it, it's not like they can just go to like. Yeah. Uh, you know, with a big airplane, they can't go to anybody else. It's Boeing, right? They're the, they're the only big airplane maker in, in the U.S. So, I mean, if it no. ain't Boeing. They ain't going. <clears throat> no. So, yeah, no. I don't know. 
Uh, Colin says, adding to my beard comment here in Canada, our hair rags have been thrown out the window and we had members of the Snowbirds with hockey mullets during the season. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Just, yeah, it is awesome. But <laughs> also, awesome. I would like to see the Snowbirds get better aircraft. Better planes, yeah. Yeah, I, it, it, it seems... Canada deserves better. They deserve better. 100%. Douglas says, uh, thank you, Douglas. Uh, F-15EX has a backseat because for quick development acceptance by the Air Force, the F-15Q built for Cutter was adapted. New single seat would cost more time and money to develop. That makes sense. That's valid. However, yep. the squadrons Thanks, that are getting them are not adding Wizzos. Like, you're not going to have guard Wizzos. So it'll just be set empty. They'll tie them up. It'll be like the T-38, you know? You'll either fly you with somebody. Give, uh, you know, uh, Airman of the Quarter rides in it. Sensations. <laughs> NFL cheerleaders, dude. That's the only way this works. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For legal reasons. Hold on. There's the, there's the, hey, yeah, there's that one. And our opinions don't represent the D. Well, they're, who's we're kidding? They're not letting me fly that anyway. No. Um, okay. Are they? I would love to. <laughs> I'm available. And I won't fly anybody illegal in the backseat, I promise. <laughs> Uh, hey, Mover from Louisiana. Love the show. Catch you on DCS sometime. Go Tigers. Oh, mm. man. Tiger fan this year. Saints fan, Tiger fan, man. Although Jaden Daniels won the highs of them. No, I wish the live show. Thanks, Wicked. I don't understand those words in that combination, but I like the enthusiasm of giving Gonky $2. All right, moving on. <clears throat> uh, yep, we were talking about the EX. Douglas, take it away. That is a big, good-looking airplane. Yes, the F-15EX is the real American badass fighter jet. Can we say swear words when they're in the headlines of our articles? You're just reading, man. You're it's just your words. It's, it's your show, man. Do what you want. <laughs> but expensive. The Air Force isn't the only interested customer in the F-15EX, as Israel is now preparing to send a formal request to the U.S. for 25 of the fighters with plans to acquire as many as 50 of the aircraft. The Boeing F-15EX Eagle II fighter has completed a key test and evaluation phase, which included the successful launch of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground standoff munitions the United States Air Force announced back in October. During the test, a pair of F-15EXs launched joint direct-attack munitions, small-diameter bombs, and joint air-to-surface standoff missiles. The tests were conducted during combat hammer exercise that concluded at the end of August and occurred at Hill Air Force Base, Utah. Air Force officials said the weapons were employed during a wide range of scenarios. This marked the completion of the F-15EX's first phase of integrated test and evaluation efforts. The data collected from the test will be used to determine the full rate production for the fourth generation fighter, Defense News reported. The $93.5 million F-15EX Eagle II. It was also this week that reports came out to put the final price tag on the F-15EX Eagle II at about $93.5 million per aircraft if the Air Force sticks with its current plan to acquire 104 of the fighters. The first SAR for the Eagle II program after it shifted from being a middle-tier acquisition effort to a major defense acquisition program. Oh, this is the first SAR. I read that wrong. The acquisition pro procurement unit's cost of the aircraft has actually dropped from $114.2 million a decline of 5.24% after the Air Force announced it would reverse course on the planned cuts to the fleet and instead increase the overall buy by 24 aircraft by the fiscal year 2025, Air, For Air and Space Forces magazine first reported. Is 100 aircraft enough? The current question is whether the Air Force is actually looking to buy enough of the Eagle IIs. The aircraft, though lacking stealth and other capabilities of the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, could still be well suited to serve as airborne controllers for future collaborative combat aircraft and other drones as a launch platform for advanced weapons, including hypersonic weapons and other large ordnance, and as a new platform for advanced electronic warfare, EW platforms. Given that the aircraft has been touted to be a do-it-all fighter, the question is whether 104 of the aircraft are even enough. Many of, would, of course, be tasked with the defense of the homeland in a time of major crisis or war. Though the Air Force did reverse course and realized that its plan to acquire only 80 F-15EX Eagle IIs would leave the fleet spread thin for all the jobs it was meant to fill, the service's current goal to have 104 is lower than the originally planned fleet size of at least 144. The keywords at least need to be stressed. Critics of the program have also been quick to suggest that the F-15EX is simply a new model of an old, old warbird. 
but the supporters are as quick to note its concurrent its current configuration includes the highly capable AN APG82 active electronically scanned array ESA radar and the powerful Eagle passive active warning survivability system. I don't even know how to pronounce that acronym. Electronic e pause electronic warfare suite according to a report from the drive this seemed like a much shorter article when i was scanning it yeah the, uh, well we can well we got the highlights i think there. we got the high points yeah um so i was just looking this up uh, with the article we just talked about 93.5 million dollars versus 102.1 million dollars this thing's cheaper than the super hornet yeah uh, and the and f-35c which it doesn't talk about what the f-35a which would be more complicated comparable but you got to figure it, it's it's in the ballpark one of the things yeah. uh about this that i wanted to thanks doug we'll take that down um this has been my big complaint with the whole fifth gen thing and i'm glad they're doing this is because stealth technology in general right is kind of a day one of the war it's your red flag it's your hey we need to go in they can't see us we're going to take down their their inter integrated air defense do suppression of enemy air defense. We'll do seed. We'll do deed. We'll do all the stuff to clean the air picture. And now we're going to do onesie twosies. You know, now we need a workhorse aircraft. You can't rely on a 30 year old airframe because you've got uh, wing spar issues. You've got, you know, the spine. You've got these. We've put so many hours in Afghanistan and OIF, OEF that. Airframe life is not good. So you need to buy something new, but you need to buy something that's upgraded. So I love what they did with going to something that was already a proven design, adding capability and allowing it to, to do air to air and air to ground and doing something that doesn't need the fifth gen. You don't need all the stealth and everything to do stuff that we have to, we still have to do, right? The Louisiana Air Guard, for example, does air sovereignty alert or air defense alert in new orleans jacksonville uh well they're getting the f-35 units that had the eagle previously or the f-16 need something to go to to continue sitting alert and you know not relying on a 30 year old airframe it's good to have something new with zero hours with new technology you know it's it's still supported by the factory there's still parts there's still um uh, support from boeing that you wouldn't otherwise have so i love the idea of doing this because you need you need the bulk you need the you know the workhorse fleet of more than just a few stealth aircraft but i don't know what do you think yeah i mean <clears throat> i totally agree with you we you know i I'm, I'm a huge fan of mission specific day one you need it's like in desert storm right when they first went to iraq guess what they sent the f-117s in and they did their thing <clears throat> right and then when it was time to really level their buildings, you know, they sent in, you know, all the big stuff. So, you know, the, you know, we poo poo on the F 35 a lot. <clears throat> and the thing is like, if you look at pictures of it flying off the carrier, even, uh, you know, in the air force, it's got pylons on it, right. Yeah. For it yeah. to actually, you know, yes, it's stealth. It's, it can be stealthy, but it has a very small, uh, payload, you know, uh, an EX. I mean, uh, it's like a mini B one, Right. But guess what? You hit the uh, jettison button and all of a sudden it turns into a super, a very maneuverable 12 fighter. 12 AMRAMs, dude. Yeah. That thing and, can haul. I mean, yeah. Dude, eight. We used to, like, you know, there's the old Dos Gringo song, you know, I hate, wish I had eight AMRAMs like the Eagle. I wish I had 12. 12. You know? Well, yeah. And, and then, you know, guys will be like, well, you know, it doesn't have thrust vectoring. Well, who cares? It's got. It probably, like, probably carries like what four nine x's and then he's got a, a helmet yeah. right i mean so I, like and, well, the, and it doesn't need it because it dude we've seen the demo yeah that thing is insane it's fly by wire yeah you know it's the eagle is a four, now granted uh, no self-respecting fighter pilot in an f-16 or an f-18 is going to lose to an eagle <laughs> no of but, course not <laughs> even in ex even in ex <laughs> however comma if someone else, a lesser fighter pilot's flying against it, they're going to lose because it's a good platform and it's got a lot of thrust. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, now granted all these Eagle guys transitioning, you know, the B word, they're going to be in trouble, right. you know, having to drop stuff that, that hits the ground. They're all going to be culturally shocked about the idea of having a real mission, but I digress. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I would argue that the, really the, the only major advantage, and I, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> it's just my opinion that the F-35 has over the X would be that day one LO capability. But, you know, LO is, it's one of those things, you know, once they design it and build it, as time goes on, once it becomes obsolete, it's not like they can just, you know, put a different coat of paint on, all of a sudden it's invisible again, right? So who knows? When well, it's, uh, but it's got the e pause thing. I mean, it's it's got self-protection <clears throat> capabilities and 12 so AM ramps. Well, yeah, the EX, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the EX has its own way of defending itself. But what I'm right. saying is probably the only advantage an F-35 would have over an EX is, yeah. is its uh, sensors. You know, it's, it's well, yeah. So, um, and, and you know, the areas that the F-35 might have an advantage, I don't think it's enough to overcome the advantages the F-15 EX has. But that's coming from a fourth gen guy who, has you know limited fifth gen experience but there's no there you can't get around it the ex is a it's a bad <laughs> it's a pretty bad machine well and it it also because it's still supported by boeing right yeah. it's so it's a new technology uh all this stuff loyal wingman you know i mean imagine a world where you've got an ex with 12 amrams and you've got loyal wingman with four oh, yeah. piece with yeah. with autonomous drones and you've got maybe they throw that wizzo in the back and he's controlling your drones for you right. back there right you know i mean you've got a lot of advanced capability beyond just right what's advertised but realistically what you're using this for is i mean let's say this middle east thing kicks off again you know after after day 120 we need something that's a bomb truck uh that can protect itself you know, yeah. you know, F-35s are going to be doing seed and, you know, doing all that, that stuff. But that at that point, remember the Syrian conflict? Dude, the CJs took down the IADs in like a day and a half. Right. That. After right. that, it was just, you know, dropping bombs and drop, right. you know, I mean, that's what these, these conflicts because of, because of our political system and how we fight wars, it, it starts to become a grinder. You know, after a while, it's not just we we killed everything. Let's move on to the next thing. Right. It's okay. We're still there. We've got strategic objectives. We've got tactical objectives. We need those bomb trucks that can go in with precision weapons. Right. Uh, I didn't see though. Does it said JDAMs, SDBs, and JASMs and stuff like that? Does it have a pod? Can you put a a targeting pod on that thing and and drop like LGBs and stuff on the EX? Yeah. I'm certain you. Yeah. I, I, I'm certain. I didn't you can. see it. I, I mean, I'm sure you yeah. can. I just, I, I didn't know because, you know, I mean, you know, we were talking about, you know, you've seen the, the memes or whatever on Instagram about GPS jamming and spoofing and stuff like right, that. Right, so, right, right, right. You know, you, you still want other capabilities as well, and you want that for when they, t you run out of tail kits too. You know, when you don't have a, enough JDAMs to go around, and you're like, okay, well, we've got, you know, LGBs or or even Mark eighty two slicks. Right. Um. So yeah. I'm sure they'll have that capability as well, but I think it's a great thing. You know, I wish it was a little bit cheaper so you could buy more, but in today's economy, it's cheaper <clears throat> than the other stuff. Well, I, you know, I mean, okay. So the EX is awesome of an airplane. It's cheaper than the fifth gen stuff. Right. But you know, I, I just keep like the more I, these kind of articles I read, I mean, everything I did, um, you know, in the combat that I partook in, I could have done it in a four, <laughs> You know, so I, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, the, the big expensive, uh, fighters are awesome, but like, there is a place man for, a, you know, for a workhorse, like you well, mentioned. <laughs> yeah. And, and also somebody in the comments talked about near peer. I, I still, I'm going back to what you said earlier. I think there's a need for near peer because what's one of the things you talked about earlier on an earlier segment about the drones, right? The war of attrition. When they're sending, because because at some point you're not when, when we say near peer, we're not talking about it's going to be a J twenty <laughs> versus a, an F twenty two. It's going to be you know they're whatever's left. They're MiG seventeens that are coming across, and they've just got a thousand of them. Well, what do you right. need against a thousand MiG seventeens? You don't need a thousand <laughs> You need a thousand <laughs> Amrams. Right? right. And what can carry? Right. You know, you're going to run out yeah. of the ability to make Amrams before this becomes a thing, but you know, you need missile trucks, you know, and that's why I've talked about this on previous shows, you know, the old concept of the B1R where you had, 
you know, you, you're, you're a fighter up front and the B1 in the back, and he was just your, he had 24 AMRAMs, and he was just pew, 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 you know, launching AMRAMs for you. That is what it boils down to after, you know, after the initial phases of the, the shock and awe yeah. at some point, unless we just lost, you know, you don't get past day one. Okay, well, guess what? We never ne needed this, but realistically, you have to be able to take care of, you know, the later days of the war where you've got a, a, a bunch of uh, aircraft. Plus, any Eagle guy will tell you, you know, they're still relevant in OCA, offensive counter air. They're oh, still yeah. relative relevant in, um, you know, D DCA, defensive counter air, because that is not necessarily your bread and butter fifth gen mission. I mean, they do it really well and they do it oh, a yeah. lot. But, you know, as you've seen, you know, as a T-38 guy, Sometimes it just comes down to, you know, can we get the picture clean with the missiles that we have? Yep. And if you've got a good radar like this thing does, you can handle that. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the, the word stealth is good marketing. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's invisible. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to some things from the kids at home. T. Jones says, any plans to make more DCS videos with Ray? I guess that's for me. Uh, I just talked to Raymond. He's been having some family stuff. Uh, unfortunately, but, uh, I think he talked about maybe later this week, maybe. So I, uh, finally the, the Pimax, you had the Pimax, right? The Pimax crystal PI, that's the headset you wore. Uh, I don't that's what know. you told me. That's what you told me when I asked yes. you, you, that's what you said. Yes. Uh, it so was that's very coming nice. In, that's coming in tomorrow. Nice. Okay. Um, you would think that the issues of stealth coating and thermal damage on the F-35C, the F-18 and F-15 would continue until NGAD finishes. Thank you both. I don't know anything about those things. Yeah, we're not in charge. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> Definitely it's not in charge. Of, Thank you, though, man. Thanks. Outside of my pay grade, I don't know. Well, outside. I don't have any intel on that one. No, not even mediocre levels. Thanks. Big Cheese, thank you, says, <laughs> wonder which major next developmental program is about to enter the source selection phase cause of the funky, funky contractor's behavior, shall we discuss? That's, it would be pure speculation. No idea. I, I tell you what, I listen to some crazy stuff about AI going on these days. So it, it's it's probably going to be something pretty wild. I don't know. Yeah. Scary wild. Like uh, Big G says, and this bit goes right into Fox News. Damn it. Again. <laughs> hey, uh, but uh, Gronky Hard Hardstock. Rod Hardstock. Rod Hardstock. H A R D S T O C K. Yeah. Uh, Rod Hardstock. <laughs> that guy can say whatever he wants. Gronky, he's an idiot. <laughs> I believe we need a certain number of stealth aircraft in the beginning, but we need fourth gen replacement aircraft a lot worse, and we need them soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. One more on the F-15 EX operational lifespan is 20,000 hours versus 8,000. Yep. Dude, it's, it's, it's your work truck. You know, yeah. it's Gonkey's 2003 Dodge Ram Boy. versus four Dodge Ram, sorry. <laughs> but it's, it's you know... It, one might yeah. be the Corvette, but you're not going to take the Corvette through the mud. You need something that's going to do haul yeah, the lumber I, around. The EX will do it all. Yeah. And we're not even sponsored by Boeing. No. But we could be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Tack Air 42 says in DCS with the F 15E, they are already becoming upset with the JDAMs. They're claiming their aircraft modules are obsolete. Imagine the EX Bravo Zulu on the show. I wouldn't. Hmm, I, I honestly, yeah. I yes, I, 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 um, I'm not touching that one. Gonky, that's your comment. So uh, thanks, fun. Tech man. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't use DCS as your measuring stick, man. No, DCS is good. Uh, it's fun. That's it. I, I, have a good time. I don't use DCS players as your measuring stick. Wow, I man. think that's the. It's it's not. Thank you, Goat. Thanks, Goat, for for helping out Conky with this. Douglas Rose says uh, one more on the F-15EX operational lifespan is twenty five. <clears throat> oh, we I covered that. I thought he said that. Yeah, I highlighted uh, it and then he super chatted it. Oh, somebody guessed your call sign, dude. Uh oh, in the chat. <laughs> thanks for confirming it or not or not <laughs> or not <laughs> <laughs> sorry i was taking aback. i have no poker face dude uh let's talk about some shrinkage that was in the pool 
New in 2024, staffing up a shrinking Air Force. Okay, so this one is short enough. I'm going to read the whole thing. Um, the Air Force in 2024 plans to shrink its uniform force, but not by much. In the year ahead, the services the service hopes to number 5, 502,700 enlisted airmen and officers across the active duty Air Force, Air National Guard, and Air Force Reserve. About 1,000 fewer uniform jobs than in 2023. Congressionally proposed cuts may drive the total slightly lower. The decline is linked to plans to retire multiple aircraft fleets, but also points to the Air Force's challenges in filling these roles. Staffing those billets requires the third largest branch of the U.S. Armed Forces to hit its recruiting goals, retain airmen who are already in uniform, and pull various policy levers to ensure staff are used wisely. Officials aim to reverse the service's recent recruiting woes and bring it in and bring in 2,000. Oh, I'm sorry, 25,900 new active duty enlisted troops by the end of September 2024. The Air Force hopes adding more recruiters, changing policies around fitness and appearance, and chipping away at its own red tape will prevent last year's shortfall from becoming a longer trend. It seems to be working. As of December 8th, the service had reached its active duty enlistment goal of 6,342 people while falling about 70 people short in the reserve and about 390 short in the guard. We are trending well ahead of where we were the last time this, this time last year, Air Force Recruiting Service Spokesman spokesperson, sorry, I actually said that. Leslie Brown said, once a recruit comes in, the Air Force wants to keep them. The service expected to retain about 93% of its officers and 90% of its enlisted airmen in fiscal 2023. Spokesperson Master Sergeant Deanna Heitzman said in August, it's trying to sweeten the deal with monetary bonuses, greater job flexibility, and other policies designed to improve quality of life, particularly in most crucially understaffed fields. It's also keeping troops in the service's lowest ranks to in to longer to ensure that lagging recruitment doesn't lead to too few entry-level airmen and increasing the number of years airmen can stay in uniform before they're kicked out, among other changes to the shape of the force. Meanwhile, the Space Force has already met its officer and enlisted recruiting goals for the year as it continues to expand. The nation's newest and smallest military service is projected to grow to 9,400 billets in 2024 and total 14,300 jobs overall. You think we could fly something in the Space Force? Probably like, something in DCS. That's about it. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, when you when supply is, this is less than article. demand, uh, Space Force has no problem because no, nobody, I mean, that's not really an issue. Uh, dude, so we're trying to do more with less because you've got two problems here. One, they're cutting, but two, we can't reach the recruiting goals um yeah i mean they're lowering the standard and they are you know i'm not i'm not about kicking people out but usually they get rid of the people who aren't doing anything that don't promote uh and here in the article it's like we're going to keep them longer so (laughs) i'm talking at entry level (laughs) not where you and i are that's a whole nother problem but i see but you know i mean they're lowering the you know lower the standard and then you know, keep the underperformers. That's how they're going to boost their numbers uh, from the abysmal performance that they did, you know, last year from recruiting, which I, ju- I just think it's sad. Man. I'm like, gosh, I mean, they're trying stuff, which you got to give them credit for that. But I, <laughs> dude, it's such a complicated, it. it's such a complicated problem because in some know. areas there are no shortages like for retention or recruiting. For some areas like pilot, there's a shortage of retention, but not necessarily as much in the recruiting phase, although in some cases it is. And in some cases, it's it's both, you know, in, in some jobs that are maybe less desirable or, or people don't know enough about them. But, you know, dude, this is a, this is something we've been dealing with for a while. Right. The party had to stop. We had 20 years of huge budgets and wars that were driving huge budgets and all the money had to go somewhere and they needed more people and they were doing all this stuff. They could be selective if they wanted to because the economy wasn't doing well and and whatever. I mean, dude, you and I have talked about this from an economical perspective. We've been propping up our economy, the world economy even, for a very long time. And at some point, the music's going to stop and the military is going to become much more desirable Meanwhile, they don't have the budget to do it. Um, yeah, 
I just think, um, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I think the whole reason why they're having a recruiting problem is because they decided to treat the military just like you're going to go work at Boeing, IBM, American, you know, so whatever, a, a big yeah. corporate. It, it's like, you know, it's, it, it's exactly the same. So why would a young person join the military when they could just go work at a corporate job, have to put up with the same crap, make more money and not get shot at. Like I, cause you know, when I was a little kid, my dad, you know, my dad would always tell me, he's like, man, you go to the military. It's about how well you perform. And you know, it's uh it'll turn you into a man, you know, it'll teach you how to fight. You know, I mean the John Wayne stuff, you know? Um, and that's, you know, as a kid, I was like, that's what I want. Well, they'll pay to turn you into a man now. No, no. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. Medical procedures, if you need it. But but that, uh, that that's the kind of stuff that is hurting them, you know. And and, and and I'm not saying it that stuff's right or wrong. But okay, so if you're going to act just like a civilian company by providing that kind of benefit, why why would you go there? I wouldn't. You know. I mean, looking at it objectively as a as a young person, I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about before. One is messaging because, you know, you've got a very um, information centric generation because yeah. they've all they've all they've ever grown. I mean, look at I mean, your kids have grown up with technology that you didn't. I mean, I don't know if you let them use iPads and stuff like that, but most of America does, uh, yeah. even though you don't. <clears throat> um, so the. 18, 19, 20 year olds are growing up with TikTok. And we've talked about TikTok. It's yeah. 15 to 30 seconds worth of, of mind melt. And the information is, it's, it's ADD fuel, ADHD fuel. It's just dopamine hit, dopamine hit, dopamine hit. And so everything is high reward as quickly as possible. And if I can't get a reward as quickly as possible, I move on to the next thing. Meanwhile, You've got, I mean, dude, I mean, I hit 40 last year or this year. This is the most divided I've seen a country in my adult life. Like I've never seen the levels of everything is a conspiracy on every side of the aisle. Everything's always a conspiracy. Everything is treason. You know, both sides are accusing of each other of, of treasonous acts. It's so divisive. Like I remember before you could disagree with somebody and it was a it was a policy, not a person. You know, you would say, well, I don't agree, disagree with this. You know, I mean, now granted, there would be the quips. I mean, even Reagan back in the day, you know, I'm not going to make fun of my opponents, you know, younger age. It, it did happen, but it was more civil. Like, I don't remember a time where we got into this. And so what that transcends to is these kids that go, what am I going to go fight for? Because I don't believe in no matter which side of the aisle you're on. Because if you're on one side, you're like, well, you know, it's fascist government, you know, America, there's no American exceptionalism, there's no um, desire, you know, we're, we're the invaders everywhere we go, we're bad, America's bad, why would I want to fight for bad? And then there's the other side, which says, well, you know, it's this big conspiracy, they're out to get me, they're watching me, Big Brother's watching me, America's bad because of you know, the current regime that's in place that's, that's throwing everybody in jail or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking generically here. But what I'm saying is both sides believe it. And when when you have that, there is no patriotism when you think your government is the problem, for better or worse. And when you, when you have no patriotism to go fight for your country, then it becomes the corporate thing. What can they do for me? And if you look at that and go, well, I can make X amount of money doing this here, or I can make, you know, that in the civil sector, What's the point? Well, that's what I'm saying. So they got to sell, like, you know, make the Air Force Air Force again, right? They got to, they got to, they've gone away from that. And that guard that we played that guard uh, commercial a couple shows ago. Now that, that's a step in the right direction. But, you know, I, I, there, there are young people out there. I mean, I, I didn't know anything about politics or world stuff. I still don't. But when I was, you know, 20, I just, I just had in my mind, I wanted to do something and that required me joining the military. Um, and I, th I think there's people out, there's young people out there like that now. And th that like the, that's what the military needs to focus on being the military uh, is, is what I'm saying. Well, but that's partly because 
number one, the people in charge have been in charge way too long. Oh, I get it. I, I agree with you. One everything you said is one thousand percent right. But. Well, but but look at it. The the people that have been in charge have been in charge for like sixty years. Like we 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 desperately need to get new new like blood, who? new faces everywhere. <laughs> but the other piece to this too is, dude, when you and I joined, we were galvanized, dude. We watched you. We watched. We've talked about this. We watched thousands of people die in real time oh, on yeah. tv yeah it at that point it did not matter who what when where we were just mad and we wanted to go kick some doors in mm -hmm. you know it's the toby keith song we'll stick a boot in your ass it's the american way <laughs> that's what i'm saying the military like needs to promote military stuff i mean yeah, yeah but I, I just i just think this article is sad because <laughs> they're just looking at the numbers they're actually i don't think they're do, doing the right steps to fix the problem but that's just my own armchair quarterback you know yeah well and okay. and dude you can't be you can't be centrist anymore that's the problem you just can't, <laughs> we can't nobody will really? let you nobody will let you dude there is there is no patriotism is this dude. show left or right mover go ahead you can't be you can't be <laughs> anything everybody's you, everybody gets mad at you yeah, I don't, for I don't whatever pay, reason, I don't pay attention. Gonky, you just don't want to talk about it. I get it. All right, Plexi <laughs> says your take on using two million dollar missiles to shoot down two thousand dollar drones. How long is that feasible? How much does it cost to lose an American serviceman or woman, or whatever? Hey, well, Plexi, I, I mean, yeah, 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 Plexi has the point. He just, you know, it's kind of like we joked about. Uh, how much was the Chinese balloon, and how many missiles do we shoot at him? You know, does it matter? Money's already spent. But is it? I, I don't know, man. Yeah, um, money's already spent. I mean, it's yeah. money's already spent. I, I so. understand what he's saying. Um, but you got a good point where it's like, well, if it's $2 million to keep it from blowing a hole in the side of a ship and sending it to the bottom of the ocean, then, it, then it's actually totally worth it because the ship was $2 billion. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's a Michael story. Aiken, huh? That's a police dog. Be careful. Yeah, she is. A, well, and you can't even be a cop without people hating you. For reference, Gonky set up at Wings Pro Sim U3 GS5C oh, right, yeah. Brunner FSSB stick, butt kickers, SRS seat shaker, Thrustmaster rudders, Leap of Motion 2, Win Wing setup, 75 inch LED TV, 7950X, 4090 Strix. Dude, how did you not win? My <laughs> God, dude. Mike, you thank you. This. this was like. The 4D chess you were playing. Meanwhile, this is what, I'm sitting this is what I'm desk. talking about. This is what I'm talking about. When like, like I, I mean, like how mm. fortunate I am to have these guys, you know, supporting the channel mm. and mover kicking my butt all the time. Um, Mike, thank you. So I, see, I don't know any of those specs, but there it is. There it is. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks, Mike. Wow, are the bad guys lowering their standards? That's well, another, another. so there's another philosophical answer. Mm. Who are the bad guys? Mm hmm. There's right. no, dude, 80s, we had the, the red, the commies. Rocky. I can't even right. say commies now with people getting mad at me. Like, commies are the, like, some people like the commies now. They want to be commies. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I, know. I, know. I mean, a, their, their plan is working. Yeah. Who's, who's they? Seems like easy <laughs> math. Less pilots equals more drones, UAVs. Well, yeah. 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 Whether it's good or bad, I don't like it. Luna, I need some emotional oh, support after that comment. Uh, <laughs> Doug, I do read USS Thanks, History. I thought I was alone. Oh, Doug, you guys are big cheese. All right, moving on to the next. Uh, uh, what are we at? Oh, yeah. Hey, so a little bit of GA news. As a man who's been wrongfully accused myself, uh, Trent Palmer. Uh, do you know this story, Gonky? Uh, you've mentioned it before. Refresh my memory. So Trent Palmer, uh, he's one of the sky cowboys or something he, he flies the stole aircraft i thought about this because we talked about air cams last week uh which is why google is probably recommending it to me uh so he had uh he was doing he was going to a friend's house and he did this like low pass and he's like this was a an intel oh, yeah. gathering pass and i did a go around and there was video and they said well hey you were within 500 feet of another building we're going to suspend your license for 120 days. And he took it all the way to the um, NTSB or whoever, the board, and 
lost and is appealing the 120 day suspension of his license. And so in this article that Douglas has, uh, which I've just summarized, the EAA and AOPA have both uh, stepped up to help um, address the federal appeals court on Palmer's behalf, maintaining the NTSB uh, board was consistently ignoring provisions of the pilot's bill of rights. He notified, uh, noted that FAR 91-119 specifies altitude restrictions carry the qualification except when necessary for takeoff and landing. And he said that his low pass was necessary for takeoff and landing because, well, I was checking it out and I decided not to land. Uh, parting, punishing him for a prudent decision could induce other pilots to land uh, to avoid a violation, even when better judgments. And then uh, AOPA Legal Services has helped him, uh, has helped with this as well as a uh, petitioner brief on December 11th. Um, and they have uh, till January 17th to file a response. So I thought we could talk about that for a minute. Um, not much yeah, beyond it's good that. Oh, well, it's a good uh, example of why a lot of pilots hold the FAA in such high regard. Well, and it goes back to what we were just talking about. People don't trust the government. You know, when, you know, remember Reagan's, uh, I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. Bad. Uh, it's That's bad. bad. Yeah, you know, when, when yeah. they, when, when you hear those words, the most terrifying words in the English language. I mean, I, I mean, I, I remember this story now and I only know, we only know from what we've read. I don't know all the crazy details, but it sounds like he just did a low pass over a potential place he wanted to land to check it out. I've done that in Cessna's. It was like a RC field or something. It was like a very small field next to this guy's yeah. house. And they, they got the security cameras or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, how, how it's insane to me to think that, uh, all right, let's just give it a shot, shot for, you know, uh, go for a landing the first pass, you know, why wouldn't you do, I, you can call it an inspection pass. This might be personal, whatever. but I would say I think a lot of people in power tend to want to do the most severe thing as po as soon as possible when even, let's say he's guilty. Let's say he did it. He, you know, he, he buzzed this place. What benefits the flying public more? Educating this guy and having him as part of his penance, like, hey, dude, we you screwed up. Why don't we together educate the public and, you know, we're not going to suspend you because we think you flying actually helps general aviation. We think you're, you're a good ambassador for, for aviation. Let's, let's educate together. Let's, let's do a campaign together. I guarantee you would have said yes. Dude, the FAA doesn't care about general aviation. General aviation is dying. Yeah. I mean, it's a government agency. They don't need to make a profit to exist. I mean, that's, yeah. I, I, I but, you know, I mean, you have, I have, that's a pretty cynical take, Gonky, because I have heard of some FAA examiners from FISDO say that our goal is to educate. Like, they they have come out and say, said that. They have said, our goal is to educate. Nine times out of ten, we will not issue a violation if we don't have to. We use our discretion because our goal is to educate. And if, if in a cooperative situation, we would rather do the education. I could see how this guy gets... A, a violation from a disgruntled or an uneducated FAA type, but it surprises me that he took it, you know, did the legal action to, to appeal it. And it, it, you know, they didn't overturn it. That's what surprised me. Either we're not hearing all of the story. So either he did do something that was, you know, not consistent with safe operation of the airplane. Um, or it is literally the FAA just, you know, uh, reinforcing the, uh, stigma that most pilots have about the FAA. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Luna knows. Look, she's out of here. She's gone. She was, <laughs> she's like, I'm out of here. She left. I was I'm watching her. She just pranced out. I'm like, what did you just do? Yeah. I'm kind of concerned about the way she walked out. Um, all right, cool. Douglas, you got anything to add? Not really. I followed it from the beginning. Um, you can actually, you have to really look for it. I couldn't find it on short notice, but you can actually see the footage. Are we missing of, anything? Of, of what happened. No. It, it, well, other than the part where um, the guy whose land he was going to land on has a neighbor who doesn't seem to really like him or Trent. Maybe. Is he an FAA guy? No. Like, no. He's the one that reported it, though. Yeah, that was, oh, yeah. it would have never been on anybody's radar otherwise. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not saying the FAA always makes the wrong decision. That's not what I'm saying. But this article is pretty. Well, there was a, a recent. I saw this video thing about somebody landed a helicopter on their on their own house, and the whole neighborhood complained to the FAA because they're like, "Oh, it scared my dogs. Oh my god." And it's like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, you know, you know, can it, can it, I mean, you're a cop. You just give, give the guy a warning. You know, I mean, I do give warnings. I'm well, a, that's I'm, what I'm saying. I'm all it's, about the, the warnings. I think, I think the process is the education. Yeah, having, well, and, and I can speak for that firsthand, having been through it, the process well, sucks. Well, yanking a guy's license for 120 days, how is that educating him? That's what I said. Gonky, did you listen to nothing that I said that the, but, that but, what they but, should have done was but, cooperate, but that, but yes, collaborate? I agree. I agree with you. And I'm reinforcing your fact of like, hey, you know, their slogan of uh, we're here to educate is, is I, maybe I, I don't agree with it. I don't know. Well, here's the thing I've learned with the government. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> when they dig in. Well, so in a case like this, right, two sides. Let's say it started. Um, it started in a situation because this, this this is what happens when you've got a situation where one party in authority doesn't understand or gets angry, uses emotion, and maybe not a hundred percent backed in in facts or logic or reason or even the law. Let's call it that. They dig in, okay, and then party B fights it. Because they're like, well, holy shit, that's not fair. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, no, look at this. Well, then the entire organization defends itself. They circle oh, yeah. the wagons. So at every level above that, nobody will then, because the government is a, it's a self-licking ice cream cone. It, it, it is, it exists because of itself. Like it has no, it doesn't really offer much beyond itself. So to protect itself, Everyone above that, i.e., in this case, you know, all the way up to the NTSB, well, they're going to say, yeah, you know, we're right. No, we're right. And we're not going to say we're wrong because at that point, it, it, it snowballs to the point that it's a huge deal if they say they're wrong. So they're not going to. They're going to dig their heels in. And it, it, when you get beyond a certain point, there, there is no return. Now it has to be the appeals court and it has to be this big fight because it once sounds you like a swamp. That, it does get swampy. <laughs> Sounds like a swamp swampy. I've heard about. Swampy swamps. Uh, all right. Uh, Turkey has a fifth gen fighter. Gonky, that's your story. Yeah, this is wild. I had I had no clue. Um, I don't know, Doug. Did you? I can't. I don't have multiple screens. <clears throat> you want to summarize it or? Um, yeah, it's pretty much just what the headline says. Turkey has set a date for the maiden flight of their fifth generation fighter jet um that's it's called right. the con and let's see on march 17th the tfx national combat aircraft fifth generation stealth fighter jet emerged from the hangar for the first time and positioned itself on the runway while it was officially given the name con by president recep erdogan in a ceremony held in tag headquarters Wow, there's a lot of pronunciations. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> um, it's a 21 meter, 69 foot. There you go. They got that right. Nice. nice. Can it's going to be a smashing success. There you go. Can reach a maximum <laughs> speed of 1.8 Mach thanks to its twin engines, which produce 29,000 pounds God. of thrust. 60, wow. 000, almost 60,000, 58,000, almost 60,000 wow. pounds of thrust. But how much does it weigh? Uh, it doesn't say. It's 29. Oh, let's see. 20, yeah. So is it 29,000 each? Yes. Holy cow. Yeah. Con boasts all technologies the... and features found in fifth generation warplanes that will provide the opportunity to strategically attack air to air and air to ground targets as completely domestic infrastructure for secure data sharing and the use of smart munitions. Yeah. So I, I, I had no idea. Mover, did, did you have any idea that Turkey was developing a fifth gen fire? So, like, when I saw that picture, I was like, ha ha, this for they put a picture of a Raptor, but that's actually. That's actually the airplane. Has it flown? I I micro tomorrow. Did it, did it fly tomorrow? It's his maiden maiden flight. So, so I did a little research on this, and it's it's pretty fascinating because, like I said, I've I have I've never heard of this. Like it's never 
than any threat brief or any, any of that stuff. And they, they started developing, so they fly the F-16, right, Turkey, and they want a replacement for the F-16. And they don't want to rely on anybody else, right? What if they're, you know, what if they're not friendly to the Americans or the Russians or whatever? They want their own airplane. So they've stood up their own, uh, you know, uh, tactical aviation industry. And they, obviously they reached out, you know, for help developing, uh, aircraft, but they started this in 2010 and, you know, in 12, 13 short years, you know, here's their first stab at it. And I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty cool. I have no idea what the capabilities are. I mean, nobody does, at least I couldn't, I couldn't find anything concrete, uh, when I was reading through the interwebs, but, um, it looks a lot like an F-35 yeah. and a Raptor and an Eagle kind of had a three-way. <laughs> and it, uh, It's one thing to design it and fly it. It's another thing to mass produce it. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm going to totally just look at the picture. So if you uh, remember when we had uh, Rick, right, the engineer on? Yeah. So, like, if you look at the back of this thing, it has oh, the canopy round. opens the wrong way, just like right. that. F-35. Now look at the, well, it doesn't look at the tailpipe. So the tailpipes are round, right? So like, I remember Rick saying that's not real good for, for. Yeah, but that's what the Su-57 does. But that's what I'm saying. When we were talking about the Su-57 with Rick, he's like, that's, you know, the yeah. round tailpipes. See, there they are. That's very conventional. Oh, it looks like an eagle. That's what I'm saying. It looks like a Raptor and an F-35 and an eagle all kind of got together um, and had a, had a little baby, a little baby a DNA con. test. Uh, but you know, in the, obviously we're right. The thrust is pretty crazy, but why does it go Mach 1.8? It probably doesn't have any kind of variable geometry inlet. Cause that's kind of what limits the Hornet at, you know, those 1.8 ish speeds, but it'll be super interesting. I, I, I'm like, I, said, I had no idea. It, it, it is. Cause when you told me this, or when I saw this, I was like, Oh, it's going to be like that. Uh, yeah. was it the uh, Iranian 313? The one that yeah. had looked like a Vans RV eight cockpit that they just, Got, yeah, they had like a Garmin 430 off the shelf and a bunch of other stuff. Total publicity stunt. Yeah, it was just wooden, like it didn't <laughs> right. it, it didn't exist. Uh, this exists. And this is a real cool. plane. Yeah. So here's the other thing I I know I didn't know before having this channel. I've learned a lot about geopolitics uh, in my comment section. <laughs> so one of the big things right now is or right now are the the Greeks, the Greeks, the Hellenic Air Force. The Turkish Air Force, those people hate each other. NATO countries, but they hate each other. Mm. And they're constantly intercepting each other. So, you know, Turkey has kind of shied away from NATO a little bit in kind of their interactions, you know, some of the stuff they've done with Russia and, you know, the, 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 all that stuff. So how does this play? Is Russia helping them in development as much as the U.S.? Like, are they getting... Like um, what sides are they playing? I watched a, uh, I watched a bunch of stuff and read a bunch of stuff, but it's like Saab has helped them a little bit. Okay. I, I mean, didn't the F sixteen have twenty nine thousand pounds of thrust, right? Yeah, it's about yeah. depends on which engine. Yeah, twenty eight thirty. Yeah, maybe. So it wouldn't surprise me if you know they, obviously they've been using the Viper for many years, so they probably, rightfully so, have taken borrowed some technology and. And, you know, this is the first hack at it, but I just, I think it's, I think it's incredible that in a, basically a decade, they can stand this up, create a real airplane. I mean, we'll yeah. see if it flies tomorrow. F-110, 129s, those are, uh, yeah, those are GE, right? Or no, th no, no those Pratt, are uh, Pratt, Pratt, motors. Pratt motors. Yeah. Block 52 engines. Right. So I, I just think it's, uh, it's really cool that a small country like that, uh, is in that amount of time is able to put something that at least looks fifth gen. I don't, I mean, I, <laughs> I we'll would like see. to see it. Yeah. It'd be cool to cool yeah. to fly. Cause I had literally no idea. I thought, honestly, when I first saw it, I was like, Oh, this is like one of those, this is yeah. one of those two seat F 35 articles. <laughs> you know, so. Every now and then AI gets it right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. All right. Uh, my cock is making us come into work tomorrow, even though the base is closed, just to keep us busy. This is why certain jobs str oh, probably you know, struggle with the retention. Mm -hmm. Thanks, yeah. man. Zippers forever. Do subscribers get any chat benefits? Yes. Um, 
we try to get to them as we can if it's relevant to talk about. Um, so the, the flight lead and above have the chat benefits and the mission commander level can do Discord. Uh, can you mention Captain Bob Pardo recently dying in the Pardo's Bush? I didn't no. know he died. Yeah, he didn't? No, it was a couple oh, weeks ago. Yeah, so, all the Pardo push was right. He put the tail hook, <clears throat> his buddy put the tail hook down, he pushed him with the with his airplane. Yeah, Crazy. He was at Noonan's thing a while back. He was there at the golf golf place when they opened the yeah. golf course. Mover doesn't get paid enough to write citations. Mover doesn't get paid. <laughs> yeah, you can just stop there. Yeah. Mover. <laughs> Mover gets no no money. No monies. <laughs> no monies, no movers, which is good. Uh, moving on, the congressional investigation of the Osprey. So the Osprey has crashed a lot lately. And so Congress has launched an investigation into the Osprey program. Douglas, the summary, sir. Um, that's That was the summary. A congressional oh, oversight. Osprey commission. bad. Next. Yeah. Launched an <laughs> investigation into the V-22 Osprey program following the most recent, I'm making that part up, uh, following a deadly crash in Japan, which killed eight Air Force Special Operations Service members. The entire Osprey, Osprey fleet remains grounded. And I'm looking for part of the article where they mentioned how many people have been killed total. Yeah, it's so replacing the C2. Aircraft, not a mistake by the crew. Can't All three tomorrow. versions are grounded. It's faced persistent questions about a mechanical problem. Um, I swear I looked this up last time we talked about the Osprey, and it's somewhere in the 60s in terms of the number of people who have died since the oh, inception wow. of the program. It might be less. I'll go look it up again while you guys talk. Yeah, so it. I mean, anytime Congress gets involved, yeah, mm. you know, I uh, think long story short, it's a new, it's a new technology, kind of, and they're just it is no. They're I just, mean, the the tilt rotor idea, you know, it's they're just figuring it, it out, man. It's new operational. Well, it's mechanical, so you know. All right, so ten fatal crashes, killing fifty seven people. Um. 23 years wow yeah i mean that's that's still a long time like no crashes yeah. are good but i mean they're still figuring things out with you know the f-16 the FA. i mean i you know it, whatever problem they find there'll be some sort of engineering fix and there'll probably also be some sort of procedural fix and that's where you yeah. get the these procedures are written in blood right that was pounded yeah. into my cranium yeah i mean does that require congressional involvement? I don't know. I mean, when I mean, that's obviously the very definition of it's getting political. But <laughs> you know, when right. when when we lose good people, we obviously want to know the answer. But twenty three years is a long time, and even fifty seven losses in twenty three years. You know, that's still. I mean, like I said before, do I think it's safe? I think overall, yes but I think there's stuff that they need to figure out and yeah. you know, whatever's causing this, it could just be the, you know, the operational, the way it's being operated, you know, it's, it's, it's a, like you said, it's, it's something that they're still figuring out right. in the operational envelope that they may have to dial back or, you know, some, some maintenance processes might have to change or something like that. Um, but I think after 23 years, they should figure it out. You know, that, that should be something. But helicopters are just dangerous, dude. I mean, that's um, they, 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 yeah, they, they crash, a uh, crash a lot. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a it's a it's a helicopter plus fixed wing, so it's the worst of both worlds, traveling faster and with more people. Yeah. So, I mean, we were just talking about before the break, uh, or before we started about a Chinook, where you know a, a, an iPad got wedged into the any torque pedals. And right. resulted in a minute yeah. as that because the iPad fell off the mount. You know, I mean, it's a dangerous thing. And yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, the V22 is kind of a, I mean, it's a very unique flying yeah. machine. So it's not like there's a lot of them out there and they're just accumulating a lot of hours to figure this stuff out. I mean, it, it's that's why I think it's happening over time. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's either way you look at it, it's sad. They're going to find out what's wrong with it. And it, I'm confident it'll get fixed. It's just, you know, it's just sad that 23 years is a long time. Yeah. I mean, to me that that's just, I mean, 
that that's operational almost, you know I mean? If you've been doing this for 23 years, you've got the technology figured out. Now it's just a matter of fixing, figuring out the operational side of things, you know, fatigue, maintenance, you know, how, how things, how many lives, the life cycle and all that stuff. Like that's where you're starting to figure out how many hours before you need to start tearing stuff apart and replacing stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're going to find you. out. Did we want to talk about the FHP? It's a little bit different than what we're used to. <laughs> I don't know a lot about it. I'll give you my completely uh, yeah. unprofessional opinion. You Douglas. Know, I'll, I'll be the guy the, the guy in the peanut gallery. Uh, gallery with, so with here's the back story, right? Florida, Opalaka. This, Great state, uh, by the way. Florida Highway Patrolman was in the middle of a pursuit, and he... You know, the, the guy fled a traffic stop. And so he takes off and he's running code, which means lights and sirens. And he sees this car that's driving erratically. And he's like, that's my guy. And so our story begins as he's in the middle of a pursuit with said suspect. <laughs> Roll the tape. Video you'll see only on Local 10 of an FHP trooper stopping a speeding car only to discover it was being driven by another law enforcement officer. That Spoiler trooper alert. thought he was on the tail of a reckless driver. And he was shocked to find out who it really was. Local 10 of Margo is live in Miami. Can we, can we skip to the video? Speed. We don't need all that. Look, you right there. Another cop. Yeah, so he pits this guy. And watch this. He turns his lights on. Technique that are known as a pit maneuver. But they normally oh. aren't used against other law enforcement officers. Oh, I didn't see your light. Because they weren't on, sir. This incident happened on November 29th. Florida Highway Patrol received reports of a car that fled a traffic stop and was driving recklessly. After a bit of driving and following directions from dispatch, the trooper recording this dash cam video gets behind a I understand none of this, by the way. begins to follow. They leave the 826 and continue eastbound on Northwest 167th Street <laughs> before making the left turn to go north on Northwest 12th Avenue. Then, right as they approach, Park it's a beautiful pit. Oh, yeah, it is textbook. The Kia and performs the pit in the middle of the pit. He turns the lights on. Watch, yeah. The driver of the Kia leans over and turns it's in a on Kia. He's got enough problems. Red and blue light turns out it was the wrong car instead of this stopping. Right. <laughs> This reminds uh, me of like, you know, when I accidentally shot my flight lead a couple of times. It is a fratricide. <laughs> air to air. It's like a blue on blue. And then I'm getting yelled at in the debrief. This is this, <laughs> donut needs to cover this donut <laughs> operator. But dude, so um, oh, I've run code to a lot of stuff and I've, I've been around people running code, which means lights and sirens. People don't get out of the way typically, but they don't usually continue with your pursuit. Like it, it usually somebody in front of you that's driving like that going to something either has their lights on because they're going with you or they're the bad guy typically once they so i have many questions one was the captain part of the pursuit in which case where was he going because right. nobody was the mercedes was long gone they they had already bit off on the wrong thing so where were where was the captain going second was did he not notice the car with lights and sirens on behind him and did he not think hey i need to get out of the way because i've been not involved in something in a fully marked unit with my own lights and sirens and i have yielded to emergency vehicles because you still have to obey the law so what this then looks like is a dude that was driving erratically that just happened to be in the same area <clears throat> that as soon as the guy, cause you can see on, on the, uh, on the, the dash cam video, you can see that he's driving like an asshole. Mm -hmm. And so the troopers like, well, that's him. It's dark. I get it. Some of the Kias now look like Mercedes. Okay. Fair enough. Although at some point he probably <laughs> should have been like, Hey, what am I actually chasing? But you know, it's that whole dog and rabbit thing, right? You, yeah. you see something running and you're like, that's the guy. So for me, I put more of the blame on the captain because oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, I mean, interagency wise, and I don't know, Doug, if you, if you remember this, 10-ish uh, years ago, there was an FHP woman that pulled over, uh, marked, uh, I think it was Dade County unit because he was going to a detail at 120 miles an hour. 
And so she do does the traffic that. stop and she arrests him. Uh, and they were like the, the FOP or the, not the FOP, but the union was like threatening her. They were like sending stuff to her house and stuff because they were so mad that she had arrested another cop. South Florida's got a whole Zopalaka. Yeah. Mid Florida. Zopalaka is in the middle of Miami. Yeah. South Florida. They, they've got issues with this, but to me, procedurally, if you're part of the pursuit, your lights need to be on. So sec, first of all, you can't be primary in an unmarked vehicle. I don't know of any agencies that will allow you to be the primary pursuit with an unmarked vehicle because of just this. So if he was part of the pursuit, he should have been yielding. If he wasn't part of the pursuit, he should have been yielding. And if he wasn't a dumbass, he should have been yielding. Like there's no well, reason not to yield in this case. Dude, he went into the fight without squawking. I mean, except he's oblivious. That's what I'm and, saying. <laughs> like you can't, <laughs> dude, you didn't check your mirrors once. Cause that looks like he's fleeing. Like when you're driving like that, yeah. it looks like you're fleeing. And he's like, I got caught. Let me turn these on. Yeah. I got caught. Let me turn, <laughs> like, turn these yeah. on. And he had a vest on and stuff. Looked like he was going to something. Uh, he was just a captain. First of all, captains aren't going to pursuits. They're not going to that. He's not involved. He shows up. He's admin. He shows up like two hours later to, oh, yeah, hey, what do we got, guys? Like, there's no reason for that. He's just driving like an asshole. I'm a total layman, dude, but it looks pretty suspect to me. Like, what were you doing, man? Yeah. I don't know. Cool video, though. Yeah, he... Uh, Perfectly executed. It was... It, it's not... That doesn't, that doesn't look good. That just doesn't look good. Anyway, uh, Kate says, thank you for being here for us at the holidays. Thanks, Kate. Uh, Zippers forever. Turkey had full access to the F-35 design and data and were building components before they bought S-400 and were kicked out. Yeah, there's that. Mm -hmm. Scandalous. Nathan says, uh, the Black Hawk is very safe and beloved aircraft, but its crash rate isn't that far behind the Osprey. I don't know how comparable the situations are, but the difference of public perception is major. I don't. I, I think it's worse. I mean, I bet it's more than those numbers. Yeah, I, I mean, they the Black Hawk is used. I mean, there's yeah, there's so many more of those. I mean, I, dude, a guy owns one. The, right, uh, Diesel Cletus. Dave or whatever. No, uh, Cletus, no, Cletus, Cletus has a B0105. That's from his oh. old helicopter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a new police academy five. This is uh, at Auburn alum says a new police academy five. This one is Florida man joins the academy. Uh, this guy knows better. He knows better. Uh, Gonky, you're in an eye rock and full mo mullet with blue and red flashlights behind you. You hit the brakes. You made a bad choice. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Just oh, dude, dumb. That's All funny. Right. He tops right. out. <laughs> Let us move on to the mental health minute. So this one's a little different. So we've talked about kind of what happens when things aren't going well. And we, we've talked about, you know, how to deal with failure, how to move on, all that stuff. But this one crossed, uh, came to my attention previously because I'd never heard of it before. And I was like, man, that's, that's super interesting. So the arrival fallacy is basically people get sad because they work their entire lives, and that's why this applies here, because a lot of people work their entire lives for this profession. They work their entire lives to get somewhere. And then once they get there, they're like, huh, wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And there's no sense of fulfillment. They don't get that sense of fulfillment that they thought they were going to get because, well, they'd hyped it up so much in their mind. And by the time they got there, they're like, well, okay, well, I don't have anything left. And so people get sad. They get sad because they, they've got nothing else. And you see this a lot in like high performing professions, but in general, in the article that I was reading, or at least some of the advice was the way around it was you've got to be a little bit multidimensional. And we've talked about this for failure where, you know, you say, well, Hey, you need hobbies, you need backup plans. You need something that keeps you going, something to, to live for when, things aren't going well. Well, the same thing applies when things are going really well, because if you don't and you become one dimensional, sometimes you get there and you're like, wow, this is it. But, uh, and we were talking about this before the show about billionaires that don't just stop. You know, Elon Musk became a billionaire and didn't just stop. He's like, well, I want to put a man on Mars. I want to keep, uh, you know, I'm going to take over Twitter. I'm going to do this because these high performing individuals, when they get there, if they stop, 
they're going to be sad because there's nothing left. So you'll see a lot of people pivot and have to have these other hobbies and stuff like that. And sometimes it's, it's not what you thought it would be, but you're getting funneled into something else. And one of the things I'm going to talk about when I do the 2023 wrap up, when we're asking you about that is sometimes things either work out or don't work out and you find yourself in a position where you, you didn't expect to be there, but you're kind of glad you ended up there because you were kind of put in a position that, you know, the, like the Rolling Stone song, you know, you can't always get what you want, but sometimes you get what you need. And that, that is where you, you wind up overall, even though, you know, you may have already achieved everything, but you know, at the end of the day, you, you end up doing something better. So Gonky, I don't, I don't know if you have anything better for that. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> right. I'm always like, Oh, well said mover. Not a whole lot to add. Um, no, it's a real thing. I mean, I, I, you know, I was talking with Doug before the show. I'm like, Hey, we do mental health. And he's like, yeah, rival fast. I'm like, what is that? Um, you know, it, it's, uh, and, and we were talking before the show, you know, fighter pilot, professional sports player, right? Like you, you, you achieved your lifelong goal in your twenties. Now what kind of thing? Right. So, um, you know, you talked about people achieving their goals and then, you know, getting there and then being sad about it. I mean, it's a real thing. Um, I, you know, I've said before, I'm, I mean, I'm a Christian. I believe God's got a plan for you. And, you know, if you, if you seek that, you know, you'll continue, <clears throat> you know, you, you will continue to do, uh, you know, what, what you were put here to do. Um, but I, you know, where I come from, man, small town, you know, you work at the factory, uh, you retire and you die. Right. Cause it's like, it's like when they stop working, they have, they lose that purpose. Right. So I think it is important to always have a purpose. I think that's where the high performing people, you know, you talk about Elon Musk. I just think they're, you know, they're, they're, they're problem solvers, man. They're just, they're just out there looking to, to fix things and do things. And I, I, I mean, that's what I, on a much smaller scale, that's what, uh, you know, you and I, you and I do that kind of stuff. But you see it with dogs, dude. You, you yeah. take it, you take a <laughs> high drive, high performing dog and you don't give it a job. It'll tear everything up. Yeah. It, yeah. It'll tear, it'll tear your house up. You know, Kids. you've got, you've got to keep, you got to keep them busy. Yeah. You got to keep yeah. them busy. And our minds are incredibly powerful, both for and against us. And once we hit where we're, where we think we're supposed to be, and then everything else is going to be a disappointment unless you keep going towards that next thing, that next thing, that next thing. And so, you know, here's my, if you're going through it, man, talk to somebody. Don't, don't let it eat you up inside because your friends can help you refocus. You know, they can help you understand the path that you're on because sometimes we get so stuck on our own drama and our own lives that we're looking at our, ourselves through a microscope and we can't open that aperture. We can't, we can't take that 10,000 foot view, but if you go to your friends and if you, you know, family, friends, chaplain, medical professionals, anybody that is willing, um, some of the counseling services, like we've talked about military one source, all that stuff, they can help you, you know, see the bigger picture, uh, and see that, there might be more, uh, well, you know, when I, when I sat down at, at, at drill the other day and I was bummed because we were talking about Gonky's big decision. Uh, but, but mover had made it about mover, right? Cause I was sad cause I wasn't invited to the show. Right. And we, we he, he talked about sometimes you're being funneled away from what you think you want to be funneled to something better or something more fitting. So just because in this case, we're talking about the arrival fallacy, just because you achieved it, okay, well, been there, done that. Maybe that was just a prerequisite for whatever's next. And maybe that was just your first step moving on. Maybe you're, you are more than the sum of your experiences. You know, you are more than that. So you have to move on to the next thing or else you're going to be like that German shepherd that has no job. You know, you can't yeah. just, just rest. Doug, what do you got? Um, 
Gonky and I, Gonky mentioned we were talking about this before the show, and I think I want to say you said this during the show too, Gonky, that having kids is like seeing things for the first time. For oh, me, yeah. that's a big part of this, you know. Okay, so I've arrived, I've I've spent X number of years uh, learning how to drive race cars, and then I find myself in a position to teach other people, and I see, you know, n- new people learning the thing for the first time. Um, mm-hmm. I've spent 20, what, 30 some years now going over the same stuff over and over and over again for a new crop of people every semester. And it's always new because it's new for them. I think yep. that's worth remembering. That was in the in the notes that, that Mover put together on this one about volunteering your time. If you've arrived, help other people arrive and it will make the whole thing new again. Yeah, you share the joy, man. It's awesome. <clears throat> it's really cool. Yeah. I- and a really, a really good Christmas movie everybody should have watched was It's a Wonderful Life. And it kind of. Oh, dude. Every year I watch that. <laughs> yeah. I just watched it yesterday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, not yesterday. Sunday night I watched it. I watch it. That's my, our Christmas tradition. Yeah. Is me to try to watch it while everybody won't shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will I confess know. to it. Teen, teenage crush on Donna Reed because yes, of gosh, I know. I, I'm like, man, she's a pretty, pretty woman. Yeah, I, I. That's a good movie. It's a good movie, <laughs> but it, it, it has a. It's amazing how it's withstood the test of time. All these years later, and the message is still the same. Yep. You know. Yep. So, okay. Uh, anything cool. else to add on the arrival fallacy? No. We'll wrap this up. We got a couple of messages from the audience before we uh, bid the good night. Zippers Forever says, never love something that can't love you back. You can love flying, but don't fall in love with the enabler, a.k.a. your employer. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> RT Dixon. Sorry I'm late, boys. Was out flying a real P-51 today. Oh. Yes, have BFM'd in real life with Vipers A10, P51, F1, Falkwolf, Falkwolf 190, etc. P51 is still deadly if BVR is off the table. 220 knots, the P51 is a little slow. Dang, dude, I'm I'm so jealous. <laughs> uh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. So, how do yeah. I... Why don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Mover's looking. Hey, if you need somebody to keep the engine warm for you, Mover. Uh, dude, I'm in. Me. I will go. I'm, I'm a warm. DC. I can torque roll the hell out of the thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 gosh, that's awesome. awesome. Super <laughs> Forever says uh, the pupper dog right there has a job. Also wants to go for walk number four and ball throwing session number five for a day. <laughs> None of my dogs have ever been in the whole fetch thing. I, I, maybe it's just me. Like I don't know. They they fetch like once and they're like never mind. Scouts in the Sky says 18N yeah. finally took a knee and reached out to a counselor via military one source compartmentalized too much for way too long. Hell yeah. There you go. Nice man. 100 percent It's a great resource. Um, yeah. you know, it's non-medical counseling. They'll give you 12 up to 12 free sessions. Uh, if they determine that it's actually something that requires medical counseling, then obviously they'll they'll refer you because they won't do it. But you've got that. Uh there's a lot of Military family health counselors now embedded in squadrons, which I think is a wonderful thing. It helped me a lot. Um, there's chaplains, uh, which are awesome. Even if you're not religious, you can go talk to them. Um, you know, you're, if it comes down to it, medical professionals, um, dude, if it, if it gets to that point, call 911. You know, don't don't let this end Esther. your your yeah. hope because. I am I'm here to tell you that no matter how bad you think it's getting, how many people you think are against you, you can come out of this on the other side. It may not be what you thought. You know, it may not be, you know, you may not be raging around in a, a viper like you'd hoped, but you'll be here to, to talk about it. And, you know, I'm living proof of that. So anyway, cool. Well, that is it. There's no more starred things. Uh, I believe it's time to say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, and uh, next, what next Monday is New Year's, so we'll. Uh, we, what are we doing, dude? Well, I, listen, man, it's um, when I'm dealing with high command. It's. Do a, you have permission? Have you asked? Have you should have asked. Do, you should ask both at the same time, so you'd be in trouble for the same thing at one time and not have to be in trouble twice. It's strategic, dude. So I've I've got a form of battle plan and why have you it. have you thought maybe your strategies needs work? not good yes yeah have you thought yes. maybe or she's just that much better I'm not sure uh, <laughs> can we get her on the show no dude, can no. we 
If it's six days away, it's tactics, not strategy. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm already behind. Well, I may be racing on New Year's Day. So, well, we can always flex, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll definitely put something together. Yeah. Uh, we'll find Zipper something. Forever says, Com Nav House. <laughs> yes. Must be consulted. Yeah. I just work here. I just. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're like mopping the parking lot level of. You're yeah. not even, you're not even, I, you're not even I, middle management, dude. I joke my daughter, <laughs> I, my daughter, I know she thinks I'm just like the, I'm just, I'm the driver, you know? <laughs> well, dude, that's like Luna. I'm the, the treat dealer and her yes. bo bodyguard slash manager. Yeah. I don't have any oh, yeah. say over what we do. You're her, you're her live in ama. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm her au pair. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. You heard she, she came in at eight 30, like, Hey, it's bedtime. What's, what are you doing here? <laughs> She was early tonight. She's, I yeah. guarantee you she's already in bed now. All right. Well, Doug, dude, as always, we appreciate your service yeah. to our country and our channel. Thanks, Doug. Thanks um, for inviting me. We, uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up. Check out the P-51 versus Hornet coming soon Friday. Yep. Friday. 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. release time. Friday. Don't, don't mess it up, Gonky. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you.